Okay, guys, I've got bad news. You're still alive. No, I, I was just editing oh. <laughs> the, you know, the Sorry, really good um, August, September and October podcasts we made. Yep, and I ones. think all of us muted our mics. No. no. I know. They were so good. Oh, my and God. And now what? they're never going to somehow retroactively come out using the time machine we have. Oh we my, had so much Starfield discussion as well. I know, we had so much really <laughs> interesting, compelling video game content discussion. And also other wacky stuff. And I described how I thought helicopters worked. And, yeah, and now it's and all gone. And demonstrated it with your penis. It was amazing. <laughs> it's all gone. It's all gone. So I it's guess we're just going to have to start afresh today. Wow. Has it really been that many months? There we go. We've officially now got an in-universe Callan explanation. Yeah, Wait, there we go. Well, that, that's it. We've got, that's we've got a kayfabe explanation. Was, the Daniel I, walk I into the busy. ring and break both his fucking quads and then just sit there. Just... I, I, I break my fucking balls. That's hey, he did it! How long was that? Was what we got? What fucking what? Like sixty seconds in? He's mentioned his testicles. I have to do it every podcast now. It's the law. Okay. Look, I I want to get back to what we were discussing just before we began. Cops? Because I oh. cocking God. love. The Americans spell cart incorrectly. Oh, yeah. So, New York Times, right? Yes. I do your crosswords. Sorry, you're doing the New I York like Times crossword. crossword. Yeah. So, you said the Times, which implied the English Times, not the New York Times. I said the New York Times. Oh. You just don't listen to me. No, I, I don't, don't do crosswords. Like, is there, is there like a hierarchy of crosswords? Like, you know, the elite mega crossword versus, oh, no, don't do this crossword. It's for babies. If the, if the newspaper uh, on the front of it has a picture of tits or uh, information about what's going on in I'm a Celebrity, yeah. the crossword is probably going to be substandard. Do all newspapers have crosswords? Is this just like a vestigial organ that newspapers can't get rid of? I think so. I think, I think like, if you go down as far as the Daily Star, it's basically which of these is a triangle and you have to circle the triangle. There's only one I will not hear this Daily Star slander. Okay, for those of you who don't know what the Daily Star <laughs> wow, is, this, is a, this is a newspaper in inverted commas in the UK. <laughs> the basically, like, you know, what every other newspaper is, okay, here are, like, you know, the three big stories of the day, one of which is about the Royals, one of which is about tax, one of which is about, like, a major media event of some description. Which of these should we put on the front cover, you know, and they make different decisions based on the demographics? Daily Star just goes, okay, so what if we put aliens abducted my goat and then we do the world's worst Photoshop of a goat and like a dumb, really plastic looking alien costume? I think they must do it deliberately badly. They must have a person whose job is do terrible Photoshops and just look, make it look as bad as possible and put a terrible pun in the front. And I love it. I, I cocking that... love that, like, one of our major national newspapers does terrible photoshops and awful puns. Yeah, here's and the day, refuses folks. To report John the actual likes news. the Daily Star. John likes the well, Daily Star. Well, the front page, to be honest. Wait, who did the cabbage? Maybe it's just the front page. Wait, I just the admire no. the front page for its aggressive commitment to bad puns and bad photoshops and no actual news. Was it them who did the, the lettuce? Who did the yes, lettuce? Yes, it was, actually. I think they were the lettuce people. Because if they were the lettuce people... Like, they're kind of like the meme them. newspaper. They don't actually record news. They just repeatedly come up with terrible, dumb memes and occasionally one of them goes viral. It's great. I'm not against that. So here's the... On the front of the Daily... I'm looking at the front page of the Daily Star today. Yeah. Uh, which is November the 22nd, one day before Doctor Who's birthday. Is it about aliens or bad puns? It's about Cliff Richard. Um, yes. Oh, that's all that might actually be halfway <laughs> to news. <laughs> no. Um... <laughs> Was he abducted by says, aliens? Days after Crooner dissed punks, punks admit Crooner was an inspiration to them. What? I don't know. That's that's it. It just says never mind the Cliff Richard and someone's just put. This sounds, this sounds like it's not gear. news, but it's like a third of the way to news, which is way closer than the star usually gets. Well, like it's about, f- it sounds like it's about an event that involves a real person <laughs> that might have actually happened, which is so, really good for them. The, there's two things. One is the thought of the day, which they have on the front. It says, come to think of it, there is more than a hint of Cliff Richard in Anarchy in the UK. That's their thought of the day. <laughs> Sorry, thought of the day is just like they looked at what else was on the page and it was the first thing that came to mind. <laughs> hey, 
also for some reason so it's got the daily start it's got their <laughs> website it's got the the date it's got 85p is the price and then for some reason in the color yellow when everything else is in red and white it says proud to love animals and i'm like yeah that seems to be <laughs> the clientele <laughs> It kind of feels like a newspaper you could distract by holding a kitten and waving it at them while you just break into their office and steal all their money. All 85p of it. It is. I don't yeah, be mean. It's... They've got at least enough for a Freddo bar, John. It's true. Oh, dear. It is sorry, a, yeah. we're getting, we're, sorry, you were talking about crosswords. Yeah, I was just going through. I got the, the, the app and I've done the crossword for today. So I was going through some of the free ones that you get on the packs. And there was a clue. And yep. the clue was kiddie racing vehicles. And I put go-karts. Yeah. It, it didn't fit because the clue going all across the sea was vehicle for a circus clown, which fit with unicycle. But unicycle isn't spelt with a Wait, K. Wait, uni- unicycle as a, as a circus vehicle? As a clown yeah. vehicle? Yes, clowns on unicycles. They're tall unicycles. They what? Like to piss about on unicycles. Sorry, no. Sorry, John. What the fuck what? else what? are you what? associating what? with? What circus are you going to? What? Clowns drive around in little clown cars. Cirque du Soleil. What? This is so famous, it repeatedly shows up in The Simpsons as a thing. Yeah, but it's unicycles. Yeah. That's a clown, clown thing. Clown car. Yeah, but clowns no, are... No, I'm sorry. Eight, than... eight, oh let, eight letters, a thing a clown d- 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 travels around in. It's not unicycle, it's clown car. Okay, well, that doesn't work with any of the other 75 clues that it crosses over with. <laughs> well, but then all of them it's... are wrong, because clowns travel round in a clown car, where they fit loads of clowns in an unusually small car. That's how clowns travel. But the one that annoyed me was go-karts, because it was spelt with a C, not a K. And this led you down a rabbit hole of figuring out how cart is spelt in every country. Well, it's led me down a rabbit hole of realising why you prefer reading the Daily Star over anything else. Uh, if you <laughs> you've never seen a clown on a unicycle, like that's some sort of impossible thing to see. Well, it just seems like a very really highbrow thing for a clown to be doing to my. John, you went to Oxford. It's a very tall unicycle. <laughs> yes, and we didn't travel around on unicycles. We used penny farthings. Um, oh. God, the penny sorry. farthing is small compared to a clown tall unicycle. Just, just, sorry, can we just address the optics of John out of all people complaining? We are too highbrow in this context. It, everything has changed in the few months. Oh my away. god, Jesus! Okay. Next, you'll tell us that Starfield's that, actually okay, a good okay, game. No, no, no. Okay, okay, okay. Let's, let's, let's focus for a second. Let's just oh, zoom bait, in bait, on bait, yeah. what we'll a clown is. What is the purpose of a clown? I don't know. Let's ask him, Matt. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to have red hair now. Well I don't done. know if you know that. Well done, done. That was quick. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. But also has red hair. It's a double joke. It's a double yeah. joke. He's dyed his hair red. He looks like a live-action Netflix anime character. I'm not, I'm not letting this go, by the way. The purpose of a clown uh-huh. is to entertain. Not uh, by virtue of telling witty jokes like we do, obviously, but instead oh, so by busy. buffoonery. Also buffoonery. like we do in a way, but just like, you know, at different times. But like, you know, to entertain through buffoonery and comical ineptitude and failure. You know, their trousers fall down, they fall over, they prat fall, etc, etc. Now, in that, a unicycle does not fit. For a unicycle is... a you know, it's something that's quite difficult to ride. It takes skill and balance and practice to be good at a unicycle. It is almost the anti-clown vehicle. Sorry, like if you, you put say, a clown are you, are you on a unicycle, John don't have they skills. should disappear in a flash of light. Matter and anti-matter have cancelled out. But the buffoonery is, is, is made uh, interesting by the context of an actual skill. It's, it's how Tommy Cooper worked, is that he would constantly mess tricks up in a deliberate way, but making it look like he wasn't very good. So when he actually pulled off a trick, it was a lot more impressive than it would have been if he had just done the trick. It's key to buffoonery is to subverting expectations. No, and no, no, seeing no, I a won't unicycle, have this. An acrobat on a you unicycle won't have doing the juggling at the same time, basic. I would accept. That would be fine. I've seen a clown on a unicycle so, doing juggling. That's a thing they on do. Today's, then that's on not today's, a clown! On today's the episode end. of the podcast, John works out how comedy works. Um, I'll say this long. That makes sense. Look, I'm sorry, but clowning <laughs> is a very specific niche kind of comedy. Niche. Okay. Niche. Niche. Just clown. Oh my God, clown is a niche. <laughs> what are you, is it, are you going to go with the stupid American pronunciation for this? Um, it's not pronunciation. We take the piss out of. It's the use of the word niche. Yes. But it's a very specific type of doing a thing, and not the most broad. 
everything Sorry, included. are you saying clowns are the most prevalent form of comedy Sorry, in your it's, universe? It's, something isn't the most prevalent form of like comedy on, on YouTube, but are there six clowns in your recommendeds? Yes. I think the, the clown, the actual buffoonery of a clown is, as much as there are the absolute classics will be doing the clownery of, of old, cl clowns, like any sort of physical comedy is based in the era of clowns. I mean, look at someone like Boy With Tape On His Face. Just a wonderful silent act. Actually, I mean, it comes to the French mind, which is clownery of just, oh, there's not a thing here, you know. But all these new kind of acts come forward and, and we're still entertained consistently and constantly by the act of clown. I mean, just look at Boris Johnson. We elected all clowns PM. Uh, but no, uh, clowns are, uh, are built into our thing. When, think how many slapstick things we've watched. As, as kids and as adults, like it's it's good slapstick is so hard to do. Oh, right. good physical comedy is amazing. Like Buster Keaton is incredible to this he's day. A, yeah, Buster he's a Keaton clown. is absolutely. If you if you like if you if well, you are a young person who's no idea what Buster Keaton is and has never seen Buster Keaton, go look up some cocky Buster Keaton on YouTube right now. Don't pay attention to us. We're trash. Sorry, did you like, say, sorry is that a busted? Is that a busted master at work? Is that a busted Keating? No, that was a bad joke. <laughs> Oh god! Boo. I was trying to make it. This 90s. is why you don't listen to us. Go watch Buster Keaton instead. Yeah. Way better. Yeah. A incredible silent physical comedy in a time where obviously you look at it and you think this must have been done with some trickery. And very often it's just him just like doing these ridiculously dangerous things that look very funny from a particular angle. Two things. One, there's a great box that you can get of basically all of Buster Keaton's films. Oh. It's very cheap. A wonderful thing. Uh, two, there was actually a 1970s documentary about the golden age of comedy, um, which was called Four Clowns, and it is about Buster Keaton, as well as Lauren Hardy and someone I can't remember. Might have been Charlie Chase, but I'm not entirely sure. Mm -hmm. But that's clownery, John. It's not okay, niche. I think we're talking at cross purposes here. I agree. Like, a general physical comedy that you might call clownery is distinct from distinct circus clowns. That are very much their own sub thing. You're talking about the very niche. Oh, and here comes the word niche. Circus. It's okay when you use it. I can see why you're using it though. You were you were using it too broadly earlier. Um, you should do more crosswords instead of just pretending you like boat races. You're trying to go. <laughs> oh, just this very specific subset of clowns, like circus tent, fucking elephants and shit. And there's a guy yeah, in the middle. Yeah, those should be on unicycles. That ain't okay. That they've never been on unicycles. John... I'm saying they shouldn't be because that would be odd. So the okay, what no, no, you I, like I, I will accept. I will accept a compromise. They can be on unicycles if, in doing so, they are acting like it's their first time in a unicycle and they're very wobbly and they attempt to juggle custard pies and end up splashing yeah. themselves in the face with aforementioned yes. pies. Yes, that would be acceptable. Best. Yes, that's how it works, John. That's comedy of Jesus fucking Christ. Shall I start from the beginning? In the beginning, there was nothing, and then someone flicked a switch, and the universe happened. Uh, Sorry, are we you should... saying that, that circus clowns, this is specifically the act they are known for, for pretending to badly ride a unicycle while juggling custard hey, pots? John? And that all circuses yes. will have this act. John, can yes. I make a suggestion, right? Everybody listening to this is going, yes, I've legitimately seen a clown a... try and ride a unicycle, sometimes a very tall unicycle, while doing something like juggling. John, just Google, that just Google it. Just that Google is, clown unicycle. Just look, I, there's so I, many I'm pictures. Googling clown unicycle. There's so also, okay, many hang pictures. On. I, no, I, just, I just want you to know, I just typed in clown unicycle and the top autofill in Google is clown unicycle adopt me. Don't click that link. <laughs> <laughs> That's the start of a horror film, okay? That link. Okay, so I've adopted a clown. He's on his way. <laughs> oh, he's he's going to be here uh, in about 60 minutes. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> wait, what the wait. hell is this? <laughs> hey, there he is. <laughs> Lock the doors. Oh, God. <laughs> my clown corn finally comes in useful. Oh, no, that's my bell. It's fine. Clown okay. Bell. Okay. This is this is back to back to clown unicycle. Yep. So you're looking now. Lots of pictures, I'm assuming, of clowns on unicycles. <laughs> I am looking at a certain number of clowns on unicycles. However, okay. I cannot verify what percentage of clowns or unicycles in the world are represented here. I could be looking at a small vocal minority of clowns. This, this, these could be the clowns that the other clowns really don't think much of. That's why we just had a very, very low... I'm, okay, I'm going to be honest. I'm rethinking my childhood right now. 
Because because the clowns we had in the Midlands where I grew up, we didn't they didn't have unicycles. And I'm wondering whether we just had <laughs> bad clowns. <laughs> whether we just had really back, shit. Back clowns. in Thatcher's Britain, the clowns didn't have unicycles. <laughs> you joke, I grew up in the middle of the devastated form of coal mining wasteland. I know wasteland, you did! Right? I'm I grew aware. up in the middle of the fucking devastated coal mining wasteland. Our clowns couldn't afford you to cycle. Because of Thatcher! <laughs> Thatcher the milk snatcher and the unicycle snatcher apparently now. Unicycles way more importantly. Like I didn't have milk and you know I, I had a lot of problems with my bones growing up. But like <laughs> way more importantly, my clowns didn't have unicycles, and I didn't know I was missing out till today. Yeah, they were all they're all down in Essex. That was what they were. <laughs> they were all down in yeah. Essex. Did, did you okay? Did you guys ever have when you were young clowns at your birthday party? And no. They had unicycles. No, I never had a clown. I never had a clown. I've never been to a circus, to be perfectly honest. I've just seen. Well, hang on, where is this incredibly about? confident? This is what clowns because do. Because it's in the from. zeitgeist, John. Because I've just seen it. If you've ever walked around London, you will see a clown on a unicycle at some point. That's I just have inevitable. walked around London for so many years, and I do not routinely see clowns. What bit of London are you I mean, in? I will say that's weirdly specific, Daniel. <laughs> I've genuinely seen. I've also seen those big, you know, those like the big circle hamster wheels that are on like a like a big pole, and there's two of them, and they rotate around each other while the person walks around inside them. I've seen that just randomly happening on the street. Well. I mean, that's kind of that's kind of circle oh, no. vibey. Yeah, good clownery. Most of the time, no, mostly just along the river. I just walk along the river. Get bored, walk along the river. I used to walk on, along the river so regularly because I, I we we met up by um. Me and some friends for many years met up in oh what is it the um London <sighs> I can't remember the name of it one of the theatres has a really nice public area where we would meet up and have tea um, national... and I've never seen a clown on a unicycle or a double hamster wheel whatever sounds like you're missing out John <laughs> the, 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 missing, I don't know what this double hamster wheel thing you're describing is but it sounds like the start of like a Crash Bandicoot level where you have to run away into the camera away from no, a giant like, double hamster no, wheel trying to destroy you on the south bank of London. No, John, it's two big hamster wheels and it's a big it's a big stick in between them and then they kind of rotate twice around. The, the, the middle's rotating and they're rotating in the hamster wheels. What the? What is this thing? I've no idea what you're talking about. I'm pretty sure I saw it outside the National Theatre I don't think as well. John's ever seen a clown. Double hamster wheel doom machine. Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, I, I just think John's never seen a clown. Is the problem here? I think I've John's never so seen culturally... a good one. Our, cl- our clowns were were struggling. Our clowns were not doing well. Oh, John, you poor cult, <laughs> cu- poor cultural backwater of the Midlands. Sorry, we were talking about the spelling of cart. I think. Yeah, and then and then you and then you got annoyed at the concept of unicycles. <laughs> oh, there you go. A Not unicycles well, themselves. Well. Like I'm, I'm fine with unicycles either being ridden well by acrobats or faux poorly by clowns. That is acceptable to me. That I'll, that I'll buy. Okay. What are we arguing about? The search. There's the. <laughs> There's the wheelie thing. What's it called? Wait, put, put a link in the in the in the chat. He's put a link in, uh, in soup sap. I just put a link in the chat that only I can see. Screw you, listeners. I search for circle wheel. You searched for circle wheel? Circus wheel. Oh, circus wheel. Is that what it's called? I did called? say circle wheel. I don't know, but circus wheel found the circus wheel that I've seen. I saw the two people one, but that's a three people fidget spinner. So you're on. saying you just walk around and you, you randomly see unicycles and one of them? It may be Daniel yes, Bobby's a lot of weird stuff. In a circus. Are you, in fact, possibly a freak that a circus <laughs> is keeping in a cage? So people could gawk at you for sixpence. That's basically my job. Well, I may or may not be some form of circus freak. Because um, I feel like uh, you do live in a circus if you're seeing this many, whatever the cock that thing is, on a regular basis, when I've never seen this thing before. I just see things, John, and I go, what's that? I will say there? it is strange that you've seen that on a regular look. basis, but it doesn't surprise me equally. Yeah, you just... Just you see stuff. You go out in the world. You, and you see you, things. You, you famously go, hey, don't go out in the world. That's the. Joke. I think it's but possible I'm, I'm you are in fact K-fabe. like a clown in disguise as not a clown. Mm. I'm definitely not in disguise, right? Let's put that. Out. Have you seen my fucking hair? Mm-hmm. Actually, you seen Matt's hair? I'm no longer the clown. I, I genu- I'm not the class no, clown. I'm anymore. really enjoying the red hair because I get to introduce myself as Ronald McDonald having a really bad day. <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. So <laughs> I, I keep using it. <laughs> It's always good to start with your best joke. Uh, 
Um, uh, so anyway, fuck all that shit. I don't know why we're talking about fucking clowns. I want to talk about Starfield. Oh, what, okay. what, okay. what video games? Video okay, games. Just, I'm getting just, straight into okay, the you know, I'm curious what you think about Starfield. Oh, because you, God. you know, got pretty into Fallout 4. Yeah, this isn't going to go well. Fallout 4. It's my most played game on Steam, Fallout 4. Fallout 4 is also played my game. most played game on Steam. And that mine! It's fucking great. We all agree on so Fallout 4. So many modded wow. rounds of that game. Really love it. Spent so much time in Fallout 4. Favourite video game. I uh, like Skyrim as well. Played a lot, many, many, many hours of Skyrim. Mostly on like the Switch. Because I yep. love You ever played Oblivion? Go back that far? Oh, well, I was there when it launched. I remember playing on a friend's laptop and going, oh my god, this is this, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Yeah. It's, it's aged well. Played it recently. Yeah. Really good. I remember being like, you can go in the shops, but the shops are closed at certain times and all this sort of shit. I was like, that's fucking amazing. I just couldn't. I didn't have the yeah. Go play go to the inn, game. hire a room, wait until morning, so you could you know travel by light, etc. Lovely, yeah. highly immersive, great, delightful stuff. Anyway, Starfield's an absolute piece of shit, <laughs> colossal fucking failure, awful, awful, awful from the ground to the top. It's the worst fucking game I've played this year. Spoilers for the awards. Uh, it's, it's just now come sucks. okay. You either haven't played the Golem game or you're I exaggerating. I haven't played the Golem game. You should play the Golem game. It's actually kind of funny in its own. You only want me to play that, so I don't give it a lovely stuff and a lovely worst game I've played. It's this actually year kind of funny the Golem game. I, I actually am slightly. I'm, I have a slight affection towards the Golem game. <laughs> of course you do. You like Starfield. Do you like Starfield? What's your thoughts on Starfield? Before I rip it apart, it's nice for you to build it up. So I've got. To I target. think Starfield is a game. That he right, well done. Yeah, that's about it, isn't it? It's... Shut I up. disagree with some of that. But... <laughs> I think Starfield is a game that definitely feels a little bit out of time to do a Fallout 4 pun. Ah. Uh, it does feel like it's a game that's been slightly, if you will, cryogenically frozen and thought out in the future, which is not quite ready for. Ah, even more detailed ah. Fallout 4 puns. It's almost like your uh, your partner who's in the booth opposite you who gets shot in the face, and when they do wake up in the time, they're already dead. Yeah, <laughs> that's wow. that, that. That's probably too far into the analogy that I'd have gone. But yes, like okay, there are bit. Here's the thing. I think for I think Starfield is the most uneven game that I've ever played from Bethesda. I think yeah. it is yes. really uneven. Like I yes. think there are moments I absolutely love, and I think there's overall just enough like. Bethesda game flow that keeps me happy because I'm just a sucker for that stuff. And that's fine. I'm not saying that, you know, that converts to an objective number out of 100 or anything. I'm just saying I personally am a sucker for precisely this shit. Like, you know, you could put me in front of this and I'll eat that slop all day, every day, happily. Uh, so, like, you know, I, I, I'm a sucker for it anyway. Like, you know, you tell me, you put a Bethesda game in a sci-fi setting, I'm a happy to go. But that does not mean I, you know, I'm wearing blinkers to the fact that it does feel like, you know, very uneven, old in many ways. Like, it, it straight yeah. up makes me laugh and feel a bit frustrated when, like, you know, you get a new of the new magic powers and it's just a spell or a shout from the Elder Scrolls. You get a new legendary yeah. gun and it's an effect from Fallout 4 or 76 95% of the time. And they've renowned very like, subtly. <laughs> how much of it is, like, straight lifted from previous games? But in many ways, it feels like a step backwards. Like, there's bits that are just weirdly absent. Like, where the cock is melee weapon modding? Like, melee weapons don't have mods? They did in Fallout 4. That's cocking weird. Why don't melee oh. weapons have mods? Why do only guns have mods? It's bloody I old. Think- I didn't even know guns had mods because in like the, one of the earliest dungeons, I got given this legendary weapon that basically carried me till I got. Popped. Yeah, but you could make it better by using like the weapon workbench. It was one shot killing people. I'm going to make it better. I shoot it, and their wife dies as well. Like, what's the fucking point of that? Like, there's bits I really love. Like, you know, say if you take like the um the parents trait, where your parents show up at various points during the game. It's so adorable and they're so charming. Oh, you know what makes that better? voice acting oh, see, are both really good. No, Daniel, this will Sorry? make it better. For, you see, the, the one thing that makes that better is the fucking dad's voice by Tim Russ. Oh, I want two fuck dads. Yeah! It's, 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 so, it's so lovely. They're so, they're so charming and so wholesome. And it's just, when they show up, it's so wonderful. And that's like a moment of absolute cocky genius. And then something really dumb happens. Like, it, it's a real game of ups and downs. It's a real game of ups and downs. And like, as I say... I'm into this stuff already, so I'm fine with it. But, like, spoiler warning, it's not going to be my game of the year. Do you find... Oh, I have a question, right? So, no. <clears throat> I've not... Not mine either, John. <laughs> I've not <laughs> actually that. properly played Starfield yet, because when it came out, 
it just ran like shit and it didn't work and it kept bugging out and I went, okay, fuck this, I'll come back to it later. Um, and everything about it ticks all the boxes because I'm like you, John. I like I like a Bethesda romp. Um, yeah. I don't like. I hate fantasy. I don't like high fantasy. I played all the Skyrim because I'm like, ah, I'm just enjoying the Bethesda ness. Um, but with Starfield, I like space. Every time I look at it, I don't care because it just seems fucking empty. And then you have this one really dense little thing occasionally. Or you go to a planet which is supposedly empty, but there's like five guys there and like five ruins for some reason, no matter where you go. There's like a guy there. Yeah. It's always a I guy. Think you've, you've put your finger on something really important there, which is the thing that I think in some ways carries Fallout 4 to some extent is the thing that carries many a Bethesda game, which is uh, there are very few developers in this world that can come up with as good a world play space as Bethesda. <clears throat> a world that is like, you know, looks really cool and is fun to explore and is really interesting and giant mountains and rivers and it's all very scenic and you can like, you know, pick a direction, you can walk and you can stumble into this and that and the other on your journey, etc, etc. Bethesda are very good at that. But the moment you, yes, create this ridiculously huge thousand planets of, sorry, hundred planets of, uh, that have like thousands of square meets on them or whatever, you kind of lose that because all of a sudden that dense world of uh, Fallout and the Elder Scrolls uh, isn't there anymore. Because the moment you leave any primary city space and just pick a direction and start walking, you're not going to run into uh, that dense, interesting, special dungeons and characters and quests and anything because they're not going to be there. You're never going to find them by accident because the world space is too big. You're only ever yeah. going to find uh, the special, unique, cool stuff if you actually go down to uh, a named point of interest or you get told to go there. Yeah. At which, which point, means you're basically no fast traveling from a city to that point of interest, and the interstitial journey is mostly non existent. So you've kind of taken out the journey, which is one of the big things that's good about Bethesda games, going on that huge yeah. epic journey through the wilderness to get to uh, the next big location Arguably, you're walking through, I, you know, I, I think that's the best or Oblivion thing. or whatnot. I think that's the best thing. That's the, the, One of the reasons I like Fallout 4 so much is because survival mode makes that such a big core part of it. That, that yep, planning going on for the that journey. journey. Making, pick, making a route, going in a big loop to slowly bring yourself back to base after doing, yeah, the wider and wider circles of looting. It's brilliant. I know, I know, Daniel, you don't really care about the, the survival mode, not fast travelling thing like fuck that. Fuck you, I played... I played Fallout 4 and Survival Mode, I fucking loved it. I, yeah. but I, 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 almost, I, I can't, to, I can't play without. Didn't you I mod can't play without. Siding, siding with it the feels so just so I got fast travel. Oh, you, oh, you modded out, sa you modded out saving, not um. I modded out the inability to yeah. uh, not save because I was playing on Steam Deck and sometimes it would just crash yeah, when you boot it back up. So I had to have. You a know save what? That's ability. fair. That if you're play yeah. if it, if it's being unstable for you, that that's fair. Yeah, that's all I did. I had that, but literally that that is such a fun part of it, and you just can't have that in in Starfield, no matter how you cut it. You just can't. With Starfield's biggest problem is there's no journey and there's no exploration. You you choose where you want to go on the map, and wherever you choose, there will be something there. And after a while, it will be something you've already found before on a different planet. That's another question because yeah. so it, it does strike it does strike me as odd together. that they went for so many planets, but so few common types of interactable points of interest on the planets. Like how many cooking science outposts and industrial outposts? Oh, the generic science or industrial outposts. There are so, so many. And like, I don't know. I just would have, I would have thought like your absolute bare minimum would be if we're going to have a hundred planets, then there better be at least a hundred unique POIs. Like every planet should have something on it, even if it's not huge, just a little something. And like, I'm not like asking for the world here. Because if you look at like, say, the number of unique marked or unmarked locations that have something unique going on in say Fallout 4... That must be about a hundred. That'd be about that probably one over a yeah. hundred. I don't know, but like you know, if we were to say, okay, take that number of locations and just put like one on each planet, so no matter what planet you go to, there's at least a little something of interest there. Okay, that would be a big improvement. I'm not really asking for more content than was in the base, you know, uh, wasteland of but, uh, right. the, the base wasteland of the Commonwealth. The if you've got these big massive planets to explore, right? Yeah, there are so many interesting ways to do exploration that would aid you so instead of say you just land and they will generate random things around you so you could just always do the shooting bit which is the worst bit of these games or is better in this game it's still not the big no one's playing a bethesda game because they want to shoot loads no. of stuff 
right, you're playing it to explore, to journey, to find. If you had a thing where you had to land and you had to build, say, a triangulator, and you had to do that three places on the planet, and it would give you a thing. It would show you a ping one location. So you have to put effort in, and you have to go around and get, you had need Having to do that on every planets. planet where there's hundreds of planets, that I think that would get old quite fast. Yeah, but it's better than land it's kind of like a case of but if you had to say that it gave you three abandoned ones and you had to repair them and they were all like crafted little mission things and then it would ping points of interest that they were randomly generated so you had the very specific on each planet you'd have the crafted like, one bit the thing to do yeah so you'd still have 100 and then you would get the random stuff from that yeah would be a more interesting way of doing it or even like you enter low orbit and you just have to visually search like you could uh, you just lots. There's just lots of ways of doing it that isn't just you land and then it gives you all the answers. There, are, there, there, yeah. I don't see why the planets need to be as big as they are. I think, like you know, a a big a few square miles of play space like Mass Effect One does would have been fine. Yeah, we didn't I mean, need uh, the planets, to have. They are not big though, because you get to the edge of them if you walk too far. Yeah, yeah, but then you could just move over to the next pixel. Like every single pixel on a planet map is, in fact, a space that's quite a few yeah, square that, miles large. They, they are poking mass. But that completely undermines the point of it being big, then, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. There's no point to them being as big as they are. There's no benefit to it aside from being able to say in the marketing they're as big as they are. I think. Well, every single I space. Mean, that's game. the thing, though. It's like we've seen. Bethesda have done it. Fucking the the was it Daggerfall was the one that was like, no. "Here's the map. It's the size of the UK. Fuck it. It's all there. You could walk away all the way around it." Mm. And you know, just games used they used to do really massive ones. And now with the new engine, they're like, "Well, we can generate about you know twenty five square meters of dirt with eighty five identical things on it." I mean, then, in many ways, know, it's kind of like a return to form because it, it's back to the Daggerfall principle. Let's let's cooking just have an entire continent. It's mostly flat, and there's not much interesting going on there. But like, it's an entire continent. Yeah, back to the Daggerfall it is, principle. It is, it damn is, it. Yeah. it is. It's but the thing is, instead of doing that, they're like, okay, we're going to randomly generate this entire country, but also you can't really like go on any of it, um, and you have to kind of go around. And also, as much as we said, the orbits are real. Every now and then, the planet you want is, for some reason, embedded in the sun. <laughs> what? Um, just every now and then, there would be the, the sun would not be in the middle of the solar system. Great. It was a bug I was experiencing. <laughs> yeah, I, it, mm. All really of fun. these things, though, all of these things seem to be a problem with every sort of open world space game. Because every time I try them, because what, you have No Man's Sky, you've got uh, Elite Dangerous, you've got uh, that one that isn't out yet that's been like in development for 20 years and has been the most expensive game ever made Star Citizen yes Star Citizen yeah. all of them have the, and, and Starfield out, all have the same problem shout out Rodina for being uh, the one I really enjoy this thing all yeah, about the same problem they're all it, just inherently coming up with a planets. realistic scale space game is a bad idea huh? yes because <laughs> space is really big and empty it, well it yeah. is but the, and the, but the beauty of something like Star Trek right which is is, is that everything's so different all the time and you're coming across so many different things, and you can't do that randomly, or at least not without really really complicated AI. <laughs> um, yeah, but like that's not for a Star Trek game. You'd want like a Stellaris type game. I mean, that literally came he out. He literally just made was, one of those. Yeah, it was buggy as fuck. Apparently, and I haven't played it yet. Um, in fact, from Bradley, it's on sale right now, so I might pick it up. Um, but yeah, the, the, you know, that's just because it was this, this this year. A lot of games came out unfinished this year because of reasons. Um, nobody learned anything from Cyberpunk. No. Um, actually, I think they did. The, the, we'll fix it later. Fuck it. Um, that's but that's kind of, if you want to do that Star Trek thing, you want to do that. Like, if you were going, hey, we want to do a Bethesda-style game, but set in space, I would look at all of their previous games and go, okay, your biggest map to date like, was randomly generated and it's got nothing in it, and your best map was Fallout 4, where it's about, you know a few kilometers by a few kilometers but it's incredibly dense yeah and sort of doing the exact opposite of what you're really good at seems like a bad idea okay but here's the thing on the other hand i will take starfield any day over the outer world i was gonna say, i was gonna say that yeah because the, the outer, outer world is way too small that's the opposite yeah. problem that's got like you know it's got like four playable spaces and one of them's a tiny spaceship that's basically a corridor yeah, welcome and to one this... of them's like a meteorite that's one kilometer squared and it's got like three points of interest on it welcome to the planet yeah. we have 
a small bar. We have bar. one town that's directly in front of you, <laughs> one small town that's half a kilometre in the other direction, then like... A few raiders and a few ruins, and that's the planet. Oh, I landed on one town, yeah. w- one planet where there was literally just like two greenhouses. Yeah, that's oh. it. Like the first planet. That's the bit I remember playing. There's like a greenhouse, but there's no. Again, that was no like exploration. No, like they in Skyrim, they are constantly yeah uh, breaking your line of sight. Fallout as well. They're putting buildings around you. They're putting trees around you. Yeah, you're, that was the big thing Skyrim did that Oblivion didn't do quite so well. Which is Oblivion, it's all very flat in a way the same yeah. as fallout 3 and in fallout 3 it works because having long desolate views of the dead landscape works really well atmospherically but like in oblivion it doesn't really serve that purpose in a way yeah. <clears throat> but like and skyrim of course introduced a huge number of mountains to constantly make you what go an extremely long way around so distances that are actually that far as the crow flies feel like they're huge long epic journeys which is great it's yeah. a very clever so country it's the trick it's the 76 or something similar. Yeah, 76 for its problems has an amazing game world. Yeah, but you can't play it single player without paying them 100 pounds a year. Do the so planet like, in Starfield, <laughs> right? Because when, I, when I've when i seen sort of... I've like skimmed through some of your videos, for example, John, just because I'm like, what the fuck? Is, yeah. Just to get like a vibe of what the yeah. game is. Every planet I've seen is like really flat and the same. There is a little bit of tendency towards flat, but like not always. Sometimes you do find worlds with really good big mountain ranges but and what. Do they actually have? Are they big Skyrim style mountain ranges, or are they just some hills? Some of them There's... can be. I wouldn't say I've ever seen a mountain like you know as big as the biggest mountains in Skyrim, where you can like you know get on your horse and keep going up for like you know five minutes to get to the top or anything. It's no Jusant. Oh, oh, uh, uh, oh, Jusant. Wonderful, wasn't it? Jusant was great. Jusant. Jusant. Juzon is going to be towards the top of my games of the year list. Juzon is fantastic. Wait, what Beautiful the fuck game. is this? It's um like imagine uh, a journey, but game. you're climbing a mountain. It's a strand type game. Ah. It's the second strand type game. It's Death Stranding, but vertical and without Hideo Kojima, so it's over in five hours. Oh, I'm into yeah. that. It's great. And it's, there's whale it's... and there's the sky whales, and they're cute. To save them. It's spoilers, Jesus. Mm-hmm. But well, literally, they, that comes up in like lettuce in the first area. Hey, the sky. Oh works. yeah, I didn't read any of that shit. Yeah, there you go. Um, <laughs> I don't. I don't fucking give it. If it's like, oh, you could read this and stop playing the fun game, I'm like, well, I think yeah, I think this is that. the thing, isn't it? In that, um, and it's clearly why we all like Fallout Four because I like New Vegas because New Vegas is very reedy, talky, and you don't, Daniel. I didn't like New Vegas because it was buggy, shitty. Well, it's that also. But the the the, the <laughs> talky talky good times you don't care enough about that it overrides everything else in New Vegas. Yeah, I do like a good talky talky time. I don't like a reedy reedy time. Okay, yeah. Okay. No, like, this, this, is what I, thing, this is what I, I say. Defense of Starfield. I'll listen to it. In defense of Starfield, next to pretty much any other Bethesda game, like I think the script is solid. The voice acting is good. No, the no, world whoa, building whoa, whoa. is sort of interesting because they've, no, actually, cause they've no, had to come up with a new no, universe. They've actually had to no. bother sitting down and thinking about like, you know, how does this universe work? What's its backstory? And they yeah, don't just the make assumptions because the thing is uh, that universe which they sometimes do do in Elder Scrolls and Fallout. Yeah, no, it's they're the worst parts. The writing is fucking atrocious. Really? Um, it's like... disagree. There are so many little tiny quests that get carried by cute little characters for me. Sure, but the like, it's like you sit through a museum. It's like, okay, we're gonna explain to you. Oh, I why love the museum. Be... Fuck you. I love a propaganda no, museum. Right? I love Fuck the propaganda you. museum. Here's what. Here's what happens. <laughs> so here's the war. There was propaganda a propaganda museums are the best bit of every game. Bioshock yeah, Two. And you like it, John. Starfields is amazing. I love like walking through John. a museum that's blatantly been set up by a I'm faction. Johnny where likes it's blatantly it. Blatantly a bias <laughs> retelling of history, and you don't just get told yeah, things. You have to think out. Okay, wonderful. why is this particular society telling me this? What are they hiding? Yeah, and you know what, John? You know what? That's great. But you know what, John? None of that's in the game. Everyone's just friendly, friendly to each other. There's no. There's nothing. There's no need for the propaganda. Everyone seems to be pretty fucking chill. There's, it's just, the game. Every single fucking person is just they've been neutered. There's no, there's no sort of edge. It's the bluntest, safest fucking world I've ever been. You go to like, it's like here's the sexy neon city, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, people are gonna be finger blasting each other in the streets. No, this is where they've set up like the major headquarters for like this company at the end. Yeah, and it's literally like a giant, it's a giant corporate island, sure. But it's you just go, but it's it's nice, and there's like, oh yeah, but there's the CD club where it's got three fucking next generation extras dancing yeah. in the middle of it, and you're like, I want their outfits, I haven't got them yet. 
want those outfits. In real life? You'd look good in that, I think. Um, but it's just, there's no... Like, the companions, every single one of which I want to fuck off into an airlock. Okay, uh, yes. Like, you know, the, the oh, companions absolutely so fully agree. I find it so weird that in Fallout 4, where they specifically had a, a range of companions whose likes and dislikes were varied, so you'd always could have someone with you who, even if you were, like, a murdering, eating people monster, you could just travel around with Strong and he'd mostly be okay with it. But, like, yeah, yeah like, all the companions have basically the same morality... They like yeah. roughly the same things and dislike roughly the same things, and that's really weird. That is weird. The, whole, the, the it, it's it's fucking nightmarish. What stuff? Because you basically saying? you get strong armed into joining a cult, right? And no one calls it out, and the game's fine with it. Because you start and you go through the fucking the the small world mining camp, and it's just everyone singing their songs and saying their lines, and if you stood there for hours, they'd stay there, and then they just why why don't people close their shops? Why are shops always open? It feels so weird. Are they? It's such a... Yeah, yeah they it's, never it's, it's just a choice that they made. Rather than like having the player having to wait until morning, the shops are just open 24 hours a day, so you can always buy and sell. But it just removes well, that's, that's immersion. Like, I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed um, the one in uh, uh, Diamond City. Where the robot takes over during the Yeah, the, the night. robot's the only one that sells at night because he's a robot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a cute like compromise. That. True. That's a cute little compromise. It's great. And it added to that world. It made the world feel lived in and stuff. But this is just, just a guy standing behind the thing going, please don't steal from my chest, which is grabbable if you crouch too close to the edge of my store. Yeah, you know what? There are like little kind of, you know, vending machines you can sell to, like the Trade Authority kiosk. It would be a fair compromise to say, you know what? At night, at just next to the door of shops that are closed, there is a kiosk that functions as if it were the shop. Yeah, yeah or a that robot. would work as a compromise, a sure. There. Yeah, do those sort of things. But just, just don't... The shops are just open. Yep, they are. It's just... It's it's fucking... It's a pretty minor issue. Really. Yeah, but it... it no, it, but it, it's, a, it's huge. It demonstrates Because the, the world problem. is not lived in. Yeah. No one's actually doing anything. It, everything feels like you're on a ride. Well, this is... It's just everyone's just sort of sitting there going, I'm going to sit here and drink my coffee, and they just sit there forever. Well, one of the things you about New Vegas... You could say that's about anything, though. Like, well, if no. you wanted to, you could point at New Vegas and say, look, the soldiers just patrol up and down, but they're never doing anything. No, they're say, just walking up and down. This. The soldiers have a yeah, routine. But I can't say that about Fallout 4, where... You again, most certainly got... can. No, Most of the people got... are just standing around doing nothing in Fallout 4 to set dress. They're just... Uh, it, it's it's a video Shh. game. It's a cloud of ones and zeros. Everything is ultimately set dressing. Yeah, but, like, if you sit around outside Diamond City, Diamond City will be attacked and the guys will defend it ah, Outside randomly. Diamond City, yes. And one of the things I've always loved about Fallout 4 is uh, it's actually got a, yeah, really dynamic overworld to where stuff mm. will occur a large amount of the time. And where if you hear gunfire, unlike, say, Fallout 3 in New Vegas, where distant gunfire is very often just part of the ambient soundtrack to create an illusion of... Uh, bad stuff happening nearby in, in Fallout 4. If you hear just a gunfire, it's actually happening and you could go and track it yeah. down if you want to or avoid it and that's super cool. Yeah, that's wonderful. And then if you go into a city, people are sleeping at night, people are up during the thing, there's, there's guys wandering around guarding everything. It feels like it's a city that's breathing. It takes its breaths in during the day and it breathes them out at night. Uh, I'm not sure I'd say that. I think that's true in Oblivion where there's like proper... Cycles where people like you know go to particular places to eat for particular meals say, and what. Fallout 4, I think in Fallout 4 it's way more simple. It, yeah, it's simplified. Just a, I, it's I do this during the day versus still, I do this during the night. It's, enough, it's still it's no shadows of doubt whether like everybody you know picks their nose at this certain time of the day. You know that's a ridiculous. Shadows of doubt is not as complicated as Oblivion. Shadows of doubt people don't have proper like full multiple meals a day and have to actually have access to food in order to eat it and stuff. Like yeah, Oblivion I mean, is horrendously amazingly ridiculously stupid which is why it bugs the hell out half the time because it's, it's trying to co <laughs> it's trying to come up with needlessly complicated routines for every character ah watch I mean, that's Legion. delightful though isn't it but, but and half the time they just watch fall apart and break it's, it's marvellous I love Watch the Legion yeah but in, in in Starfield our biggest game ever none of it people just sort of don't do anything it just exists purely to be there and they're always there no matter what time you go to a place it will always be it there. Just, it just, yeah. I mean, if you're trying to sell me that this planet rotates slower and days are twice as long, it would be really fun if I would go, you know, at the end of the day, the guy's got dialogue about being absolutely exhausted because he's been working for like 30 hours. Yeah, you know, if, there, it, if there is a quest about this, I've not come across it yet, though I think it would be a missed opportunity if there isn't, where, you know, someone like signs, you know, as part of the Night to Make corporate storyline, someone signed a contract that they work from, you know, X time to Y time, then they get shipped out to a planet where the day's four times as long. And all of a sudden, Venus, where it's hundreds of times as long, mm -hmm. you know, and they're just sort of... 
That that would be delightful. But if there's such a thing, I haven't come across it yet. Yeah, but it it won't because there's no nothing matters. Like you've got oxygen, you've got oxygen. It's just stamina. It's just stamina. It's just stamina. It's stamina. But that's like, why not just call that stamina? Like if you put me in a spacesuit and say this is your oxygen meter. Everything from films, from books, from fucking video games, I go, oh, when that go- uh, depletes, I'm in trouble. Yeah. And that'll add a nice bit of tension to milling about and it'll add a nice risk reward system. No, it's just your stamina. I think we're supposed to assume that, like, the suit produces stamina at a certain level, but if you're doing something that requires high exertion, then you're breathing faster than the suit can make no, it. No, there's a logic to it. But no one ever says that. There was a logic to it, but it doesn't really mean it's good. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, it's not... If you see an O2, I go, okay, but, like, doing more running will make it go away faster, and, you know, you can upgrade it, give you a path of upgrades and stuff, but it's just not... there. I mean, why do you get frostbite on planets that are, like, minus 10 degrees, but not ones that are at minus 273? That's something I noticed as well, actually, and I saw... I, <laughs> why does that happen? I saw it I saw it in one of the bits I skimmed through of yours, John, whereby yeah. jetpacks are so easily accessible in that game immediately, right? And yeah, you can, you can just... get one like literally on the first plant if you just happen to run into yeah. a raider. And you can one, just absolutely. bypass quite important things with that immediately. Because there's no, that... you don't. No, I, I would not say that as a criticism. That's good. Like I've seen the, I've seen I the like um, shit, yeah. an early stage of a, the speed run of Starfield right now, and it depends on getting at the very first planet where there's that first base. You're going to take out the very first base of raiders. Uh, the speed run strategy is get a jetpack immediately. And then there's a particular rock you can jetpack off to get straight onto the roof, immediately talk down the raider leader, and then just go. And you can bypass the entire I'm, dungeon getting up to him I'm by jetpacking up to the, the roof, jetpacks. and I fucking love that. I like a sequence break, but oh, what, what, the reason I bring it up, though, is because, like, you know that, 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 that neon city thing where all the drugs are? Yeah. And you can just kind of go to the roof and jetpack out and go past security? Yeah, cool city, so you can bypass the security, you but, can just but, carry but drugs this out is the thing. But, but that's the thing about that. That doesn't make any sense in the world because if there's jetpacks in the world, why is there no accounting for that in the world building? There is no more. No, no, people jet boost packs are like their military technology because, like, so if you go for the soldier class, you start with that training. Like, this isn't a common piece of technology. Like, not everyone's walking around with a boost pack. Yeah, but it's enough. This is that, an uncommon it's, military it's technology. Enough, it's enough that you f- being able to jump off the roof of a thing and just bypass security should at least. I don't know. It just it feels like one of those things that the game just. Didn't think about. I think, Matt, I think you're overthinking it because I remember when I got to that, that paradise planet where outside there's the travellers who've been travelling for the generation ship for like 200 years. Are they all the and they're like, killed? we want the planet that we've got. And I'm like, that's kind of weird that you'd be that malicious about this. And the other ones are like, profit, profit. Uh, and I'm like, oh, this is that black and white Bethesda drawing I've heard so much about. Um, and the guy at the, the, the ground is like, oh, we, we can't contact them in any way. And I couldn't hear him say the any way part because behind me, a ship was coming into land. And I'm like, really, no possible way that you could have contacted those people with all of these ships around and your own security force. And that that is, uh, uh, there's just no, every, you are the, the guy who goes and gets stuff, even though you actually don't need to. Like if someone's like, oh my God, I, my child is missing. Could you help find them? across this road field with bandits or fucking death claws. That makes sense. Hey, could you go into space? I mean, we've all got spaceships, yeah. but do you want to do it? Like, it just made everyone seem like lazy. Yeah. And it made me hate everyone. Here's I mean, here's what I... Th- okay, okay. Uh, I'm sure you're aware. There's, there's a good chance a survival mode is coming at some point, the equivalent of the overhaul to Fallout 4. And, like, it's going to need to change some big stuff. And I think, like, in the same way that... Here's the thing. I, I think right now Starfield feels very arcadey. feels a very arcadey, fluffy, light experience that doesn't really kind of scratch a big simulation, a hardcore itch. And I'm hoping, in just the same way as for me now, the base game of Fallout 4 feels that way, Survive Mode might do a similar thing. Really hoping that's the case. Uh, I, and, like, I've been uh, thinking a lot about what it, what it could or could not change. And one thing I've been thinking about is, you know how, like, you constantly, in a very, se- well, semi-regular basis, when you arrive at a new planet, you run into a new ship and, like, our ship has broken down, we need to send X, Y, or Z to get us working again. This happens in a semi, you know, happens occasionally. Yeah. Happens sometimes. Like, the implication to me is, okay, even though ever, there's loads of ships around, they're actually kind of unreliable. They, like, break down a lot. I think your ship should break down, too. I think on a not irregular basis, when you arrive a new system, you should be like, right, that jump has burnt out our grav drive, or th- you know, this bit of the ship's been fucked up by the journey, and now we cannot travel again out of this system until we have done something. 
Yeah, let me do a we space need, we need to We need to do some fixing stuff. You might, but only, might only, be... only make that happen if your ship's been damaged and you haven't repaired it yet. I think it should, so just, ha- I think it should just be a break. dozer. I think it should happen sometimes. Just because I think there needs to be something done to stop you being able to just teleport back to civilization instantaneously the moment you want in the same way that Fallout 4 survival mode does. You've got to actually, like, you know, think, okay, if I'm going out into the star field, it might be a while till I'm coming back. I better have got the supplies I need. Uh, I better be ready to like you know yeah well, you want you want to have done your ship up because if your ship's at max health it shouldn't break down but if you've had a battle mm. and you've taken some damage then then you've got a chance of systems breaking yeah and you can go out and fix them and you can do sort of like temporary repairs to hold the ship together so you could be on a bit of a jaunt yep where nip you're down to the planet to pick up planets. fuel nip down to the planet to you, get um, supplies in order yeah, to fix the ship moment, up it's got that fuel distance but you can just teleport and then teleport again okay, <laughs> still, gonna... yeah there was definitely supposed to be a fuel system at some point it's literally well, that's, that's the, the, whole literally the opening like. cutscene is about well i sure hope we make enough money to pay for our fuel <laughs> yeah and you never see fuel there's no there's literally so many systems that just feel like they were taken out at the last minute. And here's the thing. And this could go one or two ways because, because there, there are two recent examples. In Fallout 4, it turns out all those weird systems that kind of feel like they're not doing anything, you know, like, you know, all the output, all the settlements you could set up in Fallout mm. 4 in survival mode, they actually suddenly have a purpose and it's way more interesting. Yeah. Or it could be like Fallout 76, where there's also a huge number of systems related to survival that don't do anything. And then they went on to never do anything. And some of them even got patched out later because they, they were they were annoying That's people. That's the thing. So, I mean, I, do you want to talk about the base building system? Just where you brought it up there? Oh, the out, I, I can't find a use for outposts aside from as creating like a ridiculously simple mini factorio to generate thousands of one particular resource because some corporation asked me to get thousands of that particular resource. And then you get money. It's re- yeah, it's really weird. Of. Like, there's because okay, if you're just going around, uh, you know, either buying or mining, you get like you know maybe ten or twenty of something at a time. And then if you set up an outpost on a particular resource, then go away for like five minutes and come back, there's a thousand of that yeah. resource in the boxes you've set up. So like, okay, so like either I have ten of something, or I have more than I will need for the entire rest of the game, and there's no middle ground. <laughs> Yeah, so it's either ten or a thousand. Outposts. If I, if I want to have like tra- eighty, no, 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 mate. You got you have either ten that's or a thousand. Though, take it? your pick. That, that's them trying to give value to the actual whole outpost system, which only exists to let you build more things in the outpost. Yeah, I There's mean, no I think out, of... outposts exist because they had the system. They'd already made it for Fallout Four and Fallout Seventy Six. And then they just thought, well, I guess it may as well be in here, I guess. Well, there's a great way you could do it. You could, your, your whole fucking arc could be about, you know, exploring the, the the galaxy and you could be the settlers, the first settlers going out. There's your, there's your plot. You're the first settlers to leave the solar system and you go out and you're like, you're in the early sort of wave of them. So there's a few bases and stuff already sort of set up. I will say and the you're, biggest you're missed opportunity is I've, I've yet to find a single planet where I'm clearly the first person that's been on the planet. Oh. Yeah, you're like, not. It's There's very no clear planet. that, like, not only am I not the first person here, some other people showed up, <laughs> attempted to set up some kind of mine, decided it wasn't worth it, and abandoned it. Like, this planet is just... I'm not just ruin. the second person here. <laughs> this planet's already been previously sort of pre-colonized and then abandoned. I'm generations late. Okay, so the hang on. You're old enough to be the archaeologist of the planet. That's, that's There's the two, problem There's two it. other games, right, which are, are sort of feel familiar in this context, which would be Subnautica yeah. and Star Citizen, weirdly. And that, because Star Citizen has a lot of the, it's it, it's it's an interesting game just purely because you're watching the game design document basically live and going, that's a good idea, that's never gonna happen <laughs> because it's so needlessly ambitious, yeah. right? But you know they build all of these systems in about ships have, I mean, it's the Voyager problem, isn't it? Right? It's the idea of like, oh, if you go into the middle of nowhere, you need to be able to fend for yourself and have the facilities on the ship, and that's the kind of survival mode thing you're talking about. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, you're being able to go somewhere, go, oh, fuck, I'm kind of trapped here. And then, you know, using the base building and stuff to actually kind of get yourself out of it a bit. Um, and well, repair- here's, what, here's what I think. I think the outposts and the ships need to be merged. Well, this I is- think when you land your ship, it should, like, unfold into, like, a mini base due to, like, I don't know, space fabricators. Fuck it, doesn't matter. I think when you land your ship, it should unfold and you, you can slowly... You want a space camper van. Ex- just the side comes out, a little awning comes oh, this- out and then you've got your bits and pieces. This is the on. second joke, bit. Yeah, but basically, yes. I think yeah, that no, basically... That's a, that's a great idea. When you land, your outpost should come with you and then you can sort of... Uh, it build out how complex that's going to be. And fuck it, nanotechnology, space fabricators, we can hand wave how this works. It doesn't matter. Like, is, it's a special yeah. 
Fabricator. No one else has got because Walter gave it to you because he's fucking rich. This is why okay? I bring up like, It's a brand Subnautica. new technology Stroud Eklund's using. Whatever. Have either of you like, played your through Subnautica should fully. come with you. you have? have either of you played through Subnautica fully? Yeah. I yes, I love Subnautica. Okay. I love Subnautica as well. And one of the problems with Subnautica is it has the base building thing, right? But once you get the big fucking Cyclops, it basically makes it irrelevant, right? You've got a moving base. Um, yeah, but I like having, like, you know, being able like to my little to my aquariums no, and, like, you know, I whatever like an aquarium with of plants is. I like it, too. Help. But one of the problems... <laughs> terrarium? 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 What do you say terrarium for? Is, is that is that plants, but aquarium? Terrarium. Sure, why not? It's that the, the bases, when you have the Cyclops, become semi-useless. I disagree, because the Cyclops is very tight. You can't fit that much in it. No, but I, I I think the Cyclops is a good balance of being it's it it lets you go a lot further and it gives you the abilities for that. But I do long for home after the third big monster. No, I, I, in my face. So one yeah. of the, one of the things I one of the things I did in that game is I remember building a base kind of far down into the caves, going oh I might need this, and then I ended up not needing it at all, which is fine. Yeah. It's just more that the the whole problem with I see I don't actually don't like that idea where you land and the, your base just comes from the ship because it kind of I don't like the ship being able to do everything. Really? I think the ship Yeah, the ship is kind of your home, though. That You don't need outposts. And you, no one's ever going to put a huge amount of effort into building an outpost because you could just build your ship bigger and bigger. I mean, Matt, If anything, I think around. you should be able to build anything in your ship, but it's really annoying that there's certain items you can build in outposts you can't build in your ship. Yeah, but Matt, if you look around your room, how many ships do you see? Like, Star Trek or otherwise... Because science fiction man. is they make the ship <laughs> the home. You literally can't count. Neither can I. Um, you make the ship the home. Whatever the ship is, the ship becomes the home. Like, from fucking Red Dwarf all the way to Star Trek, fucking Firefly. I it's always the with ship. That, but all of... And you want to live on the ship. And the ship designer is great, but you don't need the ship. Though it does have the problems ships... such as, like, for example, you can't have, like, a bedroom that is for a particular companion. You simply, like, your companion... You, you can give yourself quarters... Where the cock are the rest of my crew sleeping precisely? I mean, it's got other problems, like there's bounty missions that say, yeah, dead or alive, and you've got a brig, and you can't use the brig to bring them alive. It's, the brig appears to just be purely decorative. Yes. I, I, so I agree with all of this, right, to be, to be clear. It's more that, like, when we're talking about Star Trek or even Red Dwarf, something like that, all of these are big ships, right? All of these are big places with that are kind of set up by a big company or whatever right just want to point out for the nerds in the audience that red dwarf of course for two seasons was basically set on starbug their shuttle and it was great. that's true it was there was a, was a starbug. but um one of the things that again star citizen has in its game design document which i think is a firefly's not that big certainly not that big no um it's that's starts... true it's basically it's got a large it's got a large cargo hold but then you kind of get into yeah. a very narrow spine kind of... going up to the bridge and little rooms down the ladders off the main thing and you get the feeling none yeah. of those rooms are that big and there's yeah, no bathroom. People rooms. just go to the big. bathroom inside their inside their own rooms. Fry out the window. In yeah, Star Citizen, shuttles. I guess it, I, I'm supposed. To, I think it's supposed to assume it's like recycled. It's cleaned and recycled, but put back into drinking water. Well, I I, I think it's a progression thing because in Star Citizen, the idea is the first ships you get are so limited, right? In that you can't really build them out. They are tiny, and you kind of have to rely on on, on settlements and you have to rely on on, on bases. And as you build, your, you get a bigger and bigger ship. It's more and more self-reliant. And that feels like a progression in, Star, in Starfield. Because the, early on, it feels like those things should matter more. And as you get further in the game, your ship does become more and more and more. And it, it should be able to do everything, just not immediately. There are limits, though, to what you could do with the like, Have you played like much in, say, like, say, the faction missions? I Right, so I played it in a complete series, but I gave up when I get the first spacey power that made everything float a bit. Okay. Because so I, in, was, in, so I in... was bored out my fucking mind. But I, I then played it a second time off stream because I thought maybe it's just not a stream oh, kind of Did you game. do the Freestyle Rangers missions? I did a few of the Freestyle Rangers. Did the you, get, you to get to the, the ship with the giant, planet. beautiful art gallery in it? I can't fucking There's remember. There's a giant ship you so. run into at one point where someone's basically like converted this giant cargo hold into this like museum art gallery and it's stunning. But you, one, can't steal a ship. And two, most of the stuff that's in there, you can't build on your own ship. And it's yeah. really, and it really bugs me that like the ships have to stay very functional. And there's all sorts of stuff you can build in, like you know, nice furniture and stuff that you can build any and put them wherever you want in an outpost, but you're not allowed to build them in the ship. 
And well, it see, really bugs thing, me right? that you can't just use the build stuff wherever you want function in the ship. The ship just has to be whatever the habitations have and then whatever Isn't you can Isn't that like, um, what's, what's the uh, home plate in Fallout 4? You can't build loads of stuff in home plate. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, I like not to so much that. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Because you get to see the robot. When you and wake I just, up I just think it's really weird. I don't know if that was intentionally something that was added in, in order to incentivize people to have an outpost because outposts can be cozier. But like, I think the vast majority of people are treating their ship as their home in this game, and therefore you should be able to, you know, set it I up real nice if you wanted to. Fast travel button as my home. Fast travel was. But, fine. but this is. Hey, you know what? Yeah, right, fast, so if, fast travel needs something doing to it to me. Oh my god, it's got the simplest fucking fix. You've and just it didn't got go to be it. able to not teleport back to cities. Somehow or another, that's got to be stopped. No, you know what it is? You know what it is? John, it's so simple, right? What you do is when you're designing the game, you go, oh, we're going to have to fast travel a lot. Okay, so we're going to write in that people can actually teleport and you can transport to and fr like from your ship and then to like a city if you want to, if you've already visited that city. But, you know, you just teleport. Teleport the ship, then you have to go do the flying, and then you teleport back. Like, you can teleport. Short range teleporters. You can upgrade the teleporter as you go on. Long range. You actually make it a progression based thing. Just add teleporters if you're going to be teleporting us everywhere. It's so fucking weird. It's so weird that this game is so. You're like, I'm going to go to the fucking. I'm on a city. I want to go to another city. In every other game, you'd have to leave the city, get in your ship, go to the bridge, fly away, go to the other planet, land, get out, go to the city. In this one, mm. if you've been to the other city, you'd literally just go there in the blink of a fucking eye. Yeah. And I've said to, and, and I've said to pe I've said before I've had discussions about this on Twitter and people have said like I've said like you know you need to have systems where you need to actually do those transitions so things feel sufficiently large people said to me oh but that'd be really boring it would get boring really quick it's like only if you do things in the exact same order you do now like if you might have to start thinking about the game in a different way just like you do with fallout 4 survival mode where you think okay i'm not going to be able to just go back to diamond city constantly i need to actually like you know think of the route i'm going to take and at some point think okay now i'm going to go buy diamond city and visit the doctor, and visit the shop, and visit this other guy, and turn in this quest, and get this other quest. I'm going to, like, do five things, because I've got five things to do in that city, and only go there once you're ready to go there. There needs to be something that adds that to it, where going somewhere has weight, and is significant, and yeah. you go there for a reason. And you don't just, you know, nip around, because right now there is too much just nipping around everywhere. It does sound like a survival yeah. mode oh, would yeah. fix a lot of... The kind of I just don't know precisely there. how you're going to well, make yeah. it work because you can't you can't just apply the same solution. It's not the same thing. No, but it does have and an mode cut doesn't just fix everything. Like remember, Skyrim got a survival mode and it wasn't very good. Yeah, but a lot a lot of this stuff boring. is just kind of a, a core problem with the concept. <laughs> really, the stuff that I feel like it feels like it's been set up ready for a survival mode. Like there's so much cooking food everywhere. Oh, there's food you can everywhere. Eat it. Now you can just eat it if only it had a purpose. But but, that, but it, it, does, it does heal you. Just you. Eat it off the no, but actually, even if you take like the the eating pug, it's nutrition up to its max level, it still doesn't do much. Like the nutrition should be like four times stronger than it is. Like the top level nutrition should be food is now two hundred percent better than than at the start of the game because it really is. But it's, the, it's but not simple. Very good. You make food, it gives you a health boost, so it doesn't fill your health bar. It fills a secondary health bar that's to the right of it. But in a survival mode and context, so you get right? Like a little nutrition in time. in the Starfield world, food isn't a difficult resource to find, right? Because it makes sense in Fallout, right? Food is hard to find, and when you do find it, it's often you can get sick from it or it's irradiated. That's a mm. key problem. Ah, in hang that on, world. no, 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 no. Let's. I'm not having this. Okay, now this is a really easy problem to solve, which is okay, fine. Food is plentiful in the settled worlds where there are automated farms and civilization and we're in a post we were mostly in a post scarcity society. But the moment you, I think there should be a big difference between how easy it is to live when you're in civilization, but the moment you open up a cocky tear in space time and disappear off into the black, into a planet and a system where there are no other ships, and even if there's, you know, evidence that people have been there before, you're you might be like the only other person there the different rules should apply you should now be right i've got stuff to get done and that sooner or later i have to go back to civilization but it's a big trip out there and it's a big trip back it's an important thing yeah it, yeah but that comes back to the and whole idea the of the not problem, having the problem is, nothing that's the problem it the nothing problem core is that the right now what's the point of planets why do you go yeah. down onto a planet and le and go away from your ship 
But why do you do that? Why do you add anything? Exactly. Nothing right is, now, there isn't one. No purpose there isn't really one right now. Like, you know, just out of interest, because I enjoy pottering around, you can get some XP and, you know, good loot and good money. I don't mind wandering around on a planet on occasion. But, like, there's very little reason why you would ever come down onto a planet and go wandering. Now, I was, I did do that more when I first started playing, and the reason was because I needed resources for my research and my gun crafting. And that was before I realized uh, the best way to get resources was just buy them in the shop. Because they're catastrophically cheap and they're all yeah. over the place. And even like rare resources can be bought from like general goods stores. Oh, like I, but, I, you, know, you, just, you just go to like the tourist trap shop by the <laughs> spaceport in New Atlanta. And they're just selling what the cock is a terbium. Is that ore. a real element? I don't know which of these elements are real and which are sci-fi elements. But here's, here's the thing, John, right? Here's the problem. Is that you buy three ore and suddenly you can't lift anything anymore because this game has the worst encumbrance system in any game ever. Uh, you know, what? I've really not had problems with the encumbrance system at all. Like I, I, I've, I've I, comfortably I picked it up out. a lot of stuff. I, I had to. I but was then like, again, I, I've been well trained by survival mode to to run a lot a light loadout, so I always keep like 60, 70 pounds free for looting. Yeah, but it's just like I, you know, I'm so used to Fallout Four, but it's like everything has a purpose. Like you pick something up, you can break it down into useful components. Nothing yeah. is thrown away. Whereas in this, it's like, ah, uh, you don't need to pick any of that shit up. Then why can I pick it up? What's the fucking point? If it's got no value and I can't use it for anything, it's just in the way. Yeah, I it's think just... sh I think shops need to stop selling stuff or only sell common stuff or they need to have the stuff they sell as tents. Like, it's just so cocky. Like, shops shouldn't sell any rare materials, to my mind. Like, you know, I don't go round the test, down the corner to Tesco to pick up a pint of milk, and it's next to, like, a stack of cup price Eterbium, or Europium, or... Are these real elements, by the way? Which I'm of these are made up? Not. I don't know. Man. Copper, never heard that. You're the ones before. who did science. You're, you're scientists. Yeah, there's a lot of weird science. elements in the fucking, in that little separate bit on the bottom, isn't it? I didn't find any of this shit. I gave up on all that. I was like, I don't care. Yeah, also, don't care also neither of us cared about chemistry. Come on now. Yeah, fuck your rocks. So, I, yeah, I I, 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 so yeah, like, before I understood you could just buy shit, I actually did go down to planets because I wanted, like, to... to Wait, what element and, like, did you find say? rare materials. Like, if we just took materials literally out of the shops, <clears> then you would have to go to... If you wanted to upgrade, like, your gun or do a research project, you have to say, right, I'm going to find a planet that's got a terbium on it, so I'm going to travel around the galaxy until I find one, and I'm going to go down, and I'm going to wander around this planet looking for a terbium. And then you'd, have, you'd wander around the planet, you'd run into whatever's going on the planet, Abium. and you'd run into the other ships and land. Because, like, some of the best encounters I've had are, like, if you go down onto a planet and you see another ship land nearby, because they generate little events and some of them could be really fun. Like, I once ran into a cowgirl who was taking her dinosaur for a walk. It was the best thing ever. Oh. It's the best Aww. encounter I've had in the also, game, aside from my Also, parents. Terbium is a real element. Okay, there we go. It's a real thing. It's next like, to Gadon, you don't, you don't Galonium, and Dysporium. You, crucially, you can't buy it in industrial quantities at the corner shop, can you? Well, yeah, but I don't live in the sci-fi <laughs> universe where everyone has a spaceship. Well, not yeah. everyone has a spaceship, but like, we just need to be in a world where everyone's got a fabricator, and thus everyone can be mostly just produce their own shit. Like you it, should just, right, you know what you should do? You should be able to build a mine and then hire people to work in your mine. Well, probably you can. You, can. Robots, you, you, you do fancy. that, you just do the robots, then the people that work in your mine are like the, the outpost workers. But it's not for you because it will cost a lot of money for that. So you have to sell the majority of it. So you get a little trickle of it for yourself. Mm. So things have to balance out that way. And you end up sort of building up your space capitalism empire because capitalism is still alive and well in this version of space where everyone's friendly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in um, some bits of no it, anyway. Why can't right? Here's the thing: Why can't you specialize your ship? Why have they? Why have they said, "Look, you, it's well, you an RPG." Of, you kind of can. Like your ship can either be like re a really, really fast fighter, or just a slow, lumbering, heavily armored behemoth that yeah, just co coats to guns. Specializing that's two options. It would be just so much more interesting to have. Just this is a, a science ship. I could build a science vessel. And I could, I put all my points into science and I've got really exotic weird weaponry and my ship helps me locate strange ores and things that I can build strange weapons out of. Yeah, sh the ship comes with a three plus two to the scanning perk, same. Yeah. While you're in it. Sure, I could buy that. And all the things you put in it, science, mate, you, you know, you're not going to get a, you could try a brig, but it's going to be more expensive in there. But science stuff comes cheaper. And you can you can still like put everything in a ship. It would just be really yeah. expensive. But you can like focus and specialize on how you want to play the game. If you want to be an explorer, you could have like a fucking diplomat's table where you could chat with people. And I don't know. It does sound like I, the yeah, game's like, trying to do too many things I, I, and I not I would enough. buy, say, something you should put on your ship that would make any 
space-based encounter that you have, speech checks are easier thereafter. Yeah. Because you're assuming that, yeah, you're using whatever tools you've got on your ship to assist yourself. Sure, I'll buy that. What, what I think we need more than anything, though, is I think planets need to have special things going on. Because right now, planets have got... What they've got are basically the resources that are there and sometimes unique point of interest, sometimes not, sometimes generic stuff. But, like, Stellaris... Lots of planets have a unique special thing that gives that character a that gives that planet a, a unique character, and I think yeah. planets need that. Like you know, just come come up with some off the top of your head right now. So a planet where the weather is always a particularly extreme variant, like it's always cocking massive thunderstorms all the time. Uh, let's just rip off uh, Cocking Chronicles of Riddick, the first one. What was that called? Mm. Fuck it. Can't remember. Like, you know, if you're in the daylight on that planet, you're fine. But the moment night happens, shit, you're constantly swarmed by enemies. But at night on that planet, nothing but enemies all the time. But day's perfectly safe. Like, planets should have stuff like that so they're is, not just right. places where minerals are. Is, make it res All right, here's one. Resource rich. Yep. But it's uh, it's very close to the sun. So when it orbits, one the side that's got the sunlight cooks, and the other side freezes. So actually building the proper defenses to keep your base going is a lot more expensive. Yeah, you need to make bases there. worthwhile first. But yes, I get the idea. I'm saying, you know, there's yeah, lots of little. There's loads of little like planets don't there. have unique stuff going on. And the weird thing is, there is a mechanism for planets having unique stuff because planets have traits, but the traits don't actually. They're just a barrier to completing the survey data. They don't actually yeah. do anything. Is there um, like, you know, unique you might, weather You might find that this planet has a gigantic underground hive, but that doesn't mean, like, that hive's going to swarm a giant number of, you know, there's going to be a Starship Trooper-style bugs pouring out <laughs> of the hive to defend it or anything. It just means, oh, this planet's got a hive on it. I just tick one off my planetary trait list. <laughs> it's like collecting a planet. It's like when you had to go to a museum as a kid with a clipboard. I like museums with just... a clipboard. Of course you fucking do. Um, but you know, it, it, it sounds like a good time to me. I, I love that museum in Atlantis. Fucking love it. Is no, 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 still it, 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 I forgot what I was fucking saying. <laughs> I'll tell. I'll tell you what I'm fucking saying. Decorate. I got the new Atlantis apartment. Decorated it. Played the game some more, and it fucking everything. I got robbed. It was all gone to get reset. Yeah. It does. You, well, the one thing I hate more than anything else is you can That's decorate the interior the of your ship time. as much as you want by laying items out. But the moment you make any changes to the exterior of your ship, all gets oh. reset anyway. Lol. Yeah. Into the cargo <laughs> hold with all your carefully placed decorations. Even though you make no change whatsoever to that room. Fuck you. Yeah. It is. Uh, it's a horrible game. I don't think I it's a horrible game. I think I'm having I've, a fun time I've, with it. But it's. It, I think there are. There are bits I love and there are bits I hate. And yeah. I'm just having a good time because I say, I'm a sucker for this stuff. I'm just a sucker for it. Like, this is just, it's a Bethesda game, but with a sci-fi thing going on and I'm okay with it. I'm cool I with it. I thought of another planet idea. Yeah, go for it. Sound Sandstorms, it takes away all your, any map. I mean, don't have map, but any pings vanish as well. So oh, yeah. you can lose your base. No, do, yeah, do, massively low visibility yeah. base where your scanner don't, doesn't work properly. Do planets have yeah. any sort of unique weather or anything? No, no. Like sometimes there are de like they 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 do have uh, different kinds of weather. And I think like sandstorms exist and they can cause like you know issues. Like they can cause like a status condition, but the status conditions are really insignificant. They need to be like ten times more vicious than they are, and also really hard. It's to just kill like off. everything you're talking about. You know, like big sandstorms. I mean, for I mean Venus. What it rains acid on Venus. Uh, you can just walk around on Venus. It's fine. But this is the thing. What? Yeah, but here's the thing. You can just Why go to Venus go, and be like, yeah, acid. Woo. You go near like a toxic vent and it's like, oh, you're getting poisoned. I'm in a fucking space suit. How is it getting in? That's a point. I yeah. assume I because, like, this is, because the suit's somehow converting the outside air into oxygen, presumably. But this is happening on a planet where there's no oxygen. Yeah, but it's like it's sucking whatever is there to turn it into There's oxygen, which is why your oxygen is minus two hundred and seventy degrees. That's I'm why you've got moon. indefinite oxygen, John. That's not how. But how oh it... my god, John. Well, it's blatantly so... how it works in Starfield. John... How else do you have infinite John, oxygen? It just doesn't. John. It's just they don't give a John. fuck. That's the thing. It just feels like a big game. Got, of... it's, it's sucking up something and making it into oxygen. It's John. like it's like getting all the protons. Because like, okay, no, 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 no. Shut up. I have a question. I know how atoms work. No, I have a question. All right, I studied this. Oh, I know how atoms work. They've like all got little unicycles. Sharp. Elements okay. are like elements. just protons and neutrons, uh -huh. right? 
and, and electrons. No. Electrons. There we go. Le- there's electrons too. Mm. And like the difference. What are the atoms made up of? Shut up. The difference <laughs> between like one element and another is the number of electrons, right? Are you positive? Shut <laughs> yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, right. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Am I right here? Just tell me if I'm going the right direction. The difference between elements is basically the number of electrons John, you, around you, that you, proton. You can't. You can't just convert every element to other elements. That's not how they work. No, yes, you can. If you think about it, like if there's one element that's got a proton and seven electrons and one that's got a proton and eight electrons, if I just like have a piece of technology that gets the atoms, says, okay, come here, you, and this takes an electron away. Well, now it's got one proton and seven electrons and now it's the other element. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Oh, is, that, is that how that works? No. John, um, I'm going to say why yes, not? so you sort stop of, talking. T- sort of, look, John, we're just going to skip no. up. We're going to skip up past no. this. John, here's a question for you. Do you know um, yes. when you you know you're in a plane, right? Let's say the emergency os- oxygen masks drop. Yeah, sure. What do you, What's on the end of that tube, do you think? An oxygen tank? No. There is no oxygen uh, A tank. blend of oxygen, uh, no, nitrogen, is, no. and other stuff to there recreate. Is, there, is, there is no tank, John. There is an, what's known as an oxygen candle. There's just two chemicals that are, are fused together and it creates a chemical reaction that generates oxygen for about 20 minutes. What happens if it's 20 minutes before you get down on the ground? Well, you're not, you don't get down on the ground. It's 20 minutes to descend to an altitude where you can safely breathe the yeah, air. The plane, John, planes can actually come down to where there is like, more the oxygen. The point is, shit. John, you don't need... Yeah. You don't need... You, you, like that's how it would make oxygen. I mean, how do you think they we're not shipping? Do you think we're shipping like ca- big cans of oxygen up to the International Space Station? Yeah, it's like that bit in The Simpsons where the, there's the the, the the guys like turn up the, the who've been like in the uh, the polar ice caps with the big bags of ice. <laughs> and they're like, oh, come on, man, you got to charge more for this. We lost three men on this journey. He's like, well, if you can find a uh, a cheap, a different way of getting ice. I'd like to hear it. Yeah, mm-hmm. like <laughs> and the, it just... the thing is, John. Like that. that that's not. I appreciate that. Okay, the, the sure, okay, no, 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 I'm right. I've just looked okay, this up. Fuck right. you. I've looked this up. Okay. All right. So, imagine I'm in a space atmosphere, and like, what's oh, happening? The dream is there's there's <laughs> fluorine everywhere. Okay. Okay. Oh, fluorine. You're fighting Superman. There's fluorine everywhere. <laughs> all right. Fluorine. Oh, is it pronounced fluorine? I don't really know elements. Yeah, we could tell. Okay, but like, there's that everywhere. Okay, and I've looked it up. Uh-huh. All right, so fluorine or fluorine or whatever has got nine electrons, two electrons in the first shell, mm-hmm. and then like the remaining seven in the next. Oxygen's got two in the first shell and six in the next. So if I just got that fluorine and my little really, really tiny atomic grabber inside my suit takes the fluorine and says, no, no, not anymore, you, and takes one of the electrons and tosses it out of the suit. So now it's out, now it's got, like, one less electron. Now John. it's got two in the first shell no, and, no, like, six finish. in the next shell. So now John. it's now it's oxygen. John, you know what you're describing? <laughs> what? No. A nuclear bomb. There's... No, 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 no. No, hang no. on. What's the difference no. between fluorine with one electron taken away and oxygen? Because it's the, it looks the same the, to me, uh, then. The amount of protons. Anyway, okay, let's my, ignore no, 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 Okay, so my machine also has to add a certain number of protons. It can also oh, take or got... add protons oh, yeah, and neutrons. Oh, but yeah, you can do whatever. Oh, fuck, fuck yeah. So, does, so, okay, so what you're saying is I'm right. All I need is a machine that can adjust the number of electrons, protons, and neutrons Yeah, all you need is atom, a, yeah. all all you need a machine else. that can convert anything into anything. John, you've... The problem with that solution, as the thing is, if that was a solution, nothing makes any sense. And therefore, right, if it can do that, why are the toxins getting in still? <laughs> arguably, okay, you've, 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 arguably, you've, you've made raised, it more. You've raised a good point. Yeah, there. you've made it more Which, nonsensical. Okay, no, 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 no. Look, the technology is so my magical. Grabby hands are bi- the little tiny grabby hands are too busy changing the number of electrons and shit. They can't be dealing with all the poison that's getting in, too. It's poison. It's not busy. made of something else, John. It's not made of poison. It's like it's not. They're all made Busy. of the same shit, the, John. The little tiny atomic grabby hands that are changing the atoms around. They've been set the task of take what's in the local atmosphere and turn it into oxygen. But like, if they, if you walk past a poison gas event and all of a sudden cyanide's coming to, well, they've not been told to deal with cyanide. That's way more complicated. I have a, fur- I have a further question, John. What happens if you're on a planet with literally no atmosphere whatsoever? What then? Like happens in the game Starfield 2023. Okay, no, no, no shut Bethesda up. Games. Then, logically, there must be, like, even if there's, even if you're in a vacuum, you're walking on something, like the planet's made of something, you could just change that into oxygen. 
You can just change the floor through yeah. your shoes into oxygen. Yeah, exactly. There'll just there'll be there'll be little tiny grabby claws in your shoes. Yeah, little tiny yeah. atomic claws, and they'll yeah. they'll they can change that into oxygen. Why not? If you yeah, all right. like we say, if I can just add protons, neutrons, okay, electrons John. to anything, why can't I just take the carbon in the ground and turn it into oxygen? Yeah, all right, and that's John. pretty easy. Just to add a couple of electrons on, boom. Okay, out of being bad, a boom, sorted. Yeah, all right. Are you actually this thick, or is it like a thing? <laughs> no, literally, for... <laughs> actually, look, that's easy. I, I say carbon. All I need to do is literally add on two electrons. Boom, you're oxygen. That's man. all you need to do, guys. So it's so <laughs> simple. Why didn't we ever think of it before? <laughs> Shit, I better call every <laughs> atomic physicist. Quick, to quick, take John solved fission. He solved. He solved. It's even in the same group. It's a cooking reactive non-metal, according to this thing I'm looking at right now. Oh, the John's looking at thing. a periodic table. He's figured out where everyone. <laughs> They're basically the same thing. They're basically next to each other. Holy like fucking carbon, shit! Like carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, turning them into each other. That's just a case of tossing in or taking out a couple of electrons. No! Easy peasy. Easy yeah. peasy carbon squeezy. Flowers, Which is how you do, get the they? electrons out. You squeeze didn't it. Didn't they, John? Yeah. I'm going to help you out here, John. John, you're trees, didn't they? They convert carbon dioxide to oxygen. Yes, via the process of photosynthesis. Correct. Yeah. They just, it's a little, it's a cell, isn't it? It's just a little cell. Get that chloroplast going. And then I mean, you've got to be honest, like, if you, look out, if you look at a tree, they don't look that smart, do they? They just sit there growing there like idiots. They've got no defense against being cut down. If a tree can do this, we can make a soup that does this. John? Yeah, John definitely was the person who cut down that tree. John, why? What? How is a tree able to <laughs> convert CO two into O two, John? Hang is on, the clue is in the O. Um, some sunlight <laughs> is used as like the energy no. source. No, 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 no. I, I mean, like super basic. I mean, think about the what I'm saying, John. Right? We're not converting fucking like gold into O2, right? We're taking CO2. No, that right? would be really dumb because that's worth way less. You okay. want to do it the other way we're around. Taking right. C we're taking CO2, right? Yeah. yeah. And we're converting it oh, into hang on. O2. CO2. Oh, well, now we're getting complicated. Now now we're dealing with, with stuff that's multiple elements. Whoa. Right, that does not exist in nature. What a novelty, right? Whoa, hold, hold the phone there. Whoa. CO2 into O2. It's a good thing the planets what, you're walking on. What do you do? Elements. Right, on a, on a simple basis. Well, what do you Starfield, do? Starfield, that's true. What do you do to C? In Starfield, that's what's happened. You're into pure elements all the time. John, what do you do to C O2 to make it into O2? You whack, you, you get you get your little tiny atomic atomic claw and you pull it apart. So now you've got C and you've got O2. He's not, he's not wrong. Okay, he's something. Okay. He's not wrong. Right. I've decided. You'll notice I'm go though, with John, John here. Right. Why don't we just invent things that turn things into other things? What's all that pissing around with the fucking philosopher's stone? Look, we've got, this is a grammars, universe where if you want to go to the other side of the universe, you just crack open a tear in space time and you go there. Like, I yeah. think the fact that we've got a machine in our backpack that can turn one element into another at a very small micro level to keep you alive, but not enough to make it an industrial process because maybe it's expensive or shit, that's perfectly reasonable. Yeah. I agree. That's Why can't what we have Flamel this process? Used to say, isn't it? You, you, every ship's got, like, fabricators where you literally plug in raw resources and it spits out finished goods. Yeah, like that's blatantly printers. just that's, that's blatantly just yeah. some again, weird John. Space magic. Again, John. Just to, space magic, just to just to reiterate the point: if there's space magic, then why can't it filter out fucking chlorine? <laughs> because it's it's not even chlorine. It's not even. Do you know what it was? Do you know what you get poisoned by? Go on. You get poisoned by fucking argon. What? It's a fucking it's ar like argon gets you. It's a fucking noble gas. What's that? It's a shit all to you. What? Argon. It's just walking along in its top hat with a monocle. What? Hello, I'm Argon. Out of my way, pleb. Yep, that's how it works. All right. John, I've got a video on atomic energy to send to you, clearly. It's a... <laughs> Is it you sock puppets? That no, it's three hours long. I'm going to be honest. Chemistry was never my strong suit. I... Really? I kind of failed We're chemistry at GCSE. Into... We're shocked into stun here. I got an A, not an A star. Whoa. No. Sorry, you got an A in wow. chemistry. Yeah, I failed. Sorry, just sorry, just uh, just rewind. Sorry, wait, you think an A is a failure? Where yeah, did you what's get an A star? All no, the, the others I got A star, but I got an A in chemistry, so that was the one I failed. No, sorry, at. but I just sorry, I just right. Oh, you're we're, such a cunt. We're gonna ignore the failure <laughs> comment. Right, that's not about that. You got A stars in physics. I don't want to ignore it. Sorry, you got. I don't want to no, ignore. You got A stars in physics comment. and biology, and an A in chemistry. Oh no, I didn't study. I dropped physics. So I got an A star in biology. I wanted to do an A level. Got an A. Sorry, you have 
You have an A level in biology, A A grade. Yeah, I was I was asked to How? consider studying at university because I was I was How? one of the best people in my school at it. How? Because I'm quite smart, Matt. As yeah, you can but we've see, spoken by... to you. There's so many podcasts illustrating this mm-hmm. that because the, there's a pot there's like a there's a mix here the thing right because half of it yeah is, physics is not my strong suit don't really understand we're not how talking about fucking shit physics works. Right. physics is hard <coughs> look the thing is John, so, could you imagine though right it would be really funny if like legitimately just nobody had thought of this and, and John was right and then suddenly like tomorrow there's just fucking fission reactors popping up left right and wait center. why don't we just take an electron out of that that'd be way easier than it. what we're doing Take your out, just nudge a proton out of the big ball thing in the middle, innit? Yeah, with its All you in need circles. is if, if if we just assume in the future they've John. got like really tiny micro engineering, so they can you can genuinely like you know like how like if you're doing like, you know, uh OVF, you like you can see it's like a little microscope, they literally put like a little tiny uh, spiky thing into like a cell and they literally like, you know, they they squirt in the, the genetic juice. Like they do it yeah, like that. What juice. if we had a powerful enough microscope just, and like powerful uh-huh, energy to do that to, to, at an Small, atomic level? Uh-huh. We could literally look at an atom under a microscope and like get a little tiny robot powered, you know, set of tweezers and just pull an electron off. It's like, yeah, now it's something else. John, what do you pull? Yeah. Okay, right, you want it? Why do not? S- I mean, jo- can, oh, I, can I just me. point out, right? In John, the sci fi future, why not? Just, add just a little bit of context there. Because you like um, saying, "Oh, well, there'll be fission reactors everywhere." Yeah, but in the future, there's clearly no energy crisis, so maybe there are. How aren't. many atoms do you think make up a cell? One. What? Oh. One. 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 I'm going to be honest here. I don't know whether cells are all the same size, roughly. Like, is no, one c- is size. one cell of a, like is one cell of a person the same size as one cell of a cat? Jesus, I just have cells like have a roughly. You got an A in biology at A level. What do you mean the cell of a cat? What the fuck is that? <laughs> you you know there are different kinds of cell, John. You're not yeah, that fit. If, if I just pulled like a random, okay, like a blood cell, a, a skin cell of okay, a cat no, and a skin cell of a human. Are they the same size? Average. I don't know. Average, average human cell. There you go. Average human cell. The ones you stick a needle in. How how many atoms in an average human cell? Well, when you say an average human cell, Holy like this one's just sticking in. I'm thinking like like a human ovum. Well, that should be quite big. Fine. What, how, big, how many right? atoms is in a human sperm? The smallest cell. Is that the smallest cell? Yeah. Is it? I, what? It's I like a, right. a sperm smaller than like a blood cell, like a little red blood cell. I'm pretty confident. Is that true? You? I think the sperm smaller. Isn't because isn't the um. Yeah. Isn't I never the... would have guessed that. I would have I, if, if you asked me to guess, I would have said maybe yeah, like red and white blood cells, because their their task is very simple and there's loads of them. So I'm, 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 da- I'm doubting myself now. My assumption, my, my understanding was that. Oh that. dear, Mister, I know better than John the dumbass. Turns out to have no cocky clue what he's talking no, about. He's right. I looked it up. He's right. Well, so how many atoms in a sperm then, uh, John? I like how okay, you immediately so... shut the fuck up there, John. <laughs> So in the event, it's like, okay, so sperm are really quite small. Yeah. Like that's really, that's small. Small. Yeah. really small. Really small. Yeah. I just loads and there's like three in it, you know. it's Maybe like, <laughs> uh, if an atom's literally the smallest thing that can exist. No, but it's not like they're all no. packed together. <laughs> no. Okay. Not true. Okay. If, but as, as it's the smallest thing that can Wait, exist. Matt, Matt, call Sun. That's... Tell him to shut it down. <laughs> <laughs> No, okay, atoms. hang on. But like, the problem is, atoms aren't all like always ne- neatly packed in together. Sometimes they're just all like floating around pretty close by to each other. But they ain't actually that close, even if it's a solid. Yeah, sometimes they're just floating in it. Sometimes, sometimes just... they're not even next to each other. They're not even parked up. I mean, I don't. I'm not sure. Like, I don't know if you look at cells. Like, does a solid have to have atoms like literally like all like like tied together like a ball of string? To stop no, it to John. If, if Can they John, just be, sort of John, be being uh, attracted to each other so they uh, can stop some change. distance uh, away. It's about John. most, most, most about. I want to say it's ninety. Something really high. Like ninety percent is empty space, isn't it? Yeah, but yeah. don't tell me that because I don't like the idea of being 90% empty space. If I'm 90% empty space, if I'm Look, 90% just... eight, empty space and 80% water, then what the fuck am I? The, 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 like, what, the, the weak point, nuclear force? At, at, at that point, I'm just a cloud John. of fucking steam. And I don't like being John. a cloud of steam. During, during this conversation, I'm pretty sure you're 99.9% empty space. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say 10,000. 10,000 atoms in a sperm. 10,000. That's pretty good, isn't it? It's quite close what? to the... I assume it's trillions. What's the actual answer? <laughs> I assume it's trillions. I don't know. Oh, I assume it's. So, did you ask me a question without having any idea what the answer was? Yeah, because you were going to get it so wrong. It you don't know matter. I got it so wrong. No, we do. I know you got Matt, it so wrong. Matt, what's the answer? I'm going to Google it, but the thing is, it it it's 
the order of magnitude that you're working on, John, is just so far, far removed that it doesn't really matter. No, so... no, it's fine. I've seen Ant-Man. I understand how the quantum realm works. I mean, John was say, talking about protons and electrons and then stated that the atom is the smallest we can get. So I'm quite intrigued as okay. what size in a, in a tip In a typical human cell, right? I know I want yeah, to think, but in a typical human cell, um, yeah. there is 100 trillion atoms. What? I was off by a factor of two. A mm. hundred trillion? Yeah, they're Tens very the small, two. John. But ten, that ten to the fourteen. A... But that yeah. that's too many. I don't believe that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you don't believe John, that. Are there more atoms in you or stars in the universe? There's more, atom, there's more, more atoms, atoms in, than me. There's more atoms in it's your sure com than stars in the universe. <laughs> that's just for me. Yeah. That's just me, that. This is <laughs> That's too many atoms. We should get rid of some of them. We don't need all of them. Okay. Well, you're empty space, so, you know. This is all... Oh, I feel very cosmically small all of a sudden. Uh, you, where you are. I'm having a crisis here, guys. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's quite funny. Uh, oh, God. Okay, okay yeah. are we all right? We're doing all right there? Don't so anyway, that's looking the, at things around me, and they're all, they're the all made point... of... Like what if what what's next up from a trillion a quadrillion? I mean, is this the point where John realizes that when he touches something, he's not actually touching it; he's touching like the force. Well, I kind of, I'm kind of aware that obviously touch isn't a real thing; it's just a brain sensation made uh, made as feedback. I studied philosophy back in the day. Oh yeah, philosophy. So, yeah. Push harder then. Push harder. I'm just gonna push harder. I'm just I'm just gonna you know what? I'm just, I'm just gonna closer. take a philosophical view here, mm. and I'm gonna say I I like I I can't see it. There's the idiot. It's, it's <laughs> just gonna take a philosophical view. Science is too hard. Fuck it. Descartes once said. Descartes. He did. Good old Descartes. Yeah. Good old Descartes. <laughs> just gonna get three for the price of two round the corner at Tesco. It's great. Yeah. It's spelt with a K. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we were supposed He's to be talking about Descartes. No, we were. We were supposed to be talking about Starfield. I, I thought somebody would say spelled with a K. I, it's comedy. Uh, it matter. Fuck it. I don't care about either of you people. Well, uh, the thing is, John, right? Uh, again, <laughs> yeah. coming back to the initial point, just just a brief point as well, uh, just to, as a side thing about, about, about small atoms. Fucking... Um, again, you know, you're, you're saying a pair of tweezers, right? Yeah, really, really, really tiny micro okay, but, but just, but just, we're, to, we're just, operated, just, just to be clear, they're operated by a robot. I'm not sure a person will be able okay, to use just, them delicately okay, enough just, to pull an electron okay, out okay, of an just, atom. Okay, just, just, just to be clear, what are, what are the tweezers made of, John? <laughs> oh fuck! Yeah, we were... <laughs> oh, fuck! Oh, yeah. you've you've blown a hole in my uh, theory here. Yeah, just a no, bit. John, 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 oh, wait, wait, John. quarks. They're made of quarks. They're made of quarks. Yeah, which, which, that's which ones? Which ones? Are they, which are they the things that are they small quarks? <laughs> that's the, the, well, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, they're, yeah they're, okay. Yeah, what quarks are they made of? John, 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 you're not thinking it through. You're in a sci-fi universe. Get a magnet, get a string, make it really small with science. <laughs> shrink it down, shrink right. Admittedly, you've really blown a hole in my little kind of tiny robot arms. I'll press oh, this, oh, this is the well, fucking not point. Sure what where the like made of anymore. This was the ding. This, this, this was, was the problem. <laughs> you know what? Everything else I was willing to power through through the force of sheer self belief that I could eventually find it out and get, get you guys deep enough in the weeds that you would admit you didn't know either. But this, I'll admit, is a really big barrier to my tiny robot arms theory that what are the arms made the of. Thing, the thing is, though, John, I'll with you, we can. Remove, uh, we can remove protons and electrons from atoms. Radiation. Yeah. Um. It, in a lab, they would do it by oh, they would do it by firing. Um. What, what would, be, would they be firing protons? They fire. They basically shoot things. Well, that's just simulating. Um, so what? Like uh, one tiny one mini atom part replaces another. No, they just shoot. Yeah. Well, they carry the shoot. In it. In yeah. Yeah, honestly, yeah, that's roughly what I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah, yes. Electron beams. Beep, beep, yeah, beep, beep, that's, beep. that's kind of how you, you do it in a, a fusion reactor. Um, and you're doing this just to be able to breathe on a planet. Honestly, just bring the fucking rocket pack with oxygen. Especially it's like there's nothing on the planet worth exploring, so you're going to be out there for more than five minutes. Something I enjoy as well is John's... <laughs> like, it's, this... it's honestly quite disappointing that Walter's gone to all this trouble to invent tiny micro-arms to turn anything in the universe into oxygen, and we just kind of report back and say, oh yeah, how is oxygen? Ah, I don't know, I was no, only out there for this two is minutes. Just the planet spe... was pretty bloody empty. There was <laughs> this nothing is just especially there. funny, because like John's came up with this incredibly complicated sci-fi solution to a problem that we've already solved in the current day. <laughs> John, <laughs> yeah, I've got, I've got a pitch, right? Yeah, get the atom, 
make it bigger, and then just use like normal tweezers, and then make it small again. I don't know whether that's actually a thing we can do. No. Yeah, Jesus fuck it. fucking Christ, John. <laughs> fuck me. Oh my god. I love you, John. And this is what I mean. I'm surprised. How, how the fuck? How do you have an A Let's in biology? Let's make a proton bigger and see what happens. I mean, I mean, just okay. No, no. Just hear, hear me out here. Okay. okay Let's yeah. listen to what I've got oh, to say. Oh, we've here. been uh-huh. hearing you out. For okay. The like, last if you've got an off. atom, uh-huh. and it's got like little bits, if... shut up, <laughs> and it's got like little bits, like protons, electrons, got, and shit floating. Hang on, around. wait. I dropped it. Fuck. Hang on. It's got like it. little electrons whizzing around it, right? Is it the carpet. Um, it's got well, electrons. That is the atom. The electrons are considered part of the atom. Yeah, they're, okay, not, they're not whizzing like, around. They're whizzing around it in the sort of. Okay, could you sure. do something that would cause the electron to still orbit, but like further away? So therefore, the atom is now bigger. Oh, that's not how they. Well, that's not how electrons work. That's the way you kind of describe they work. With like, it looks like a planet orbiting a thing, but that's not actually how they work at I all. I choose to believe that's no, what's it's happening. It's like levels of energy. Honestly, at that bit, I don't. You're know. dealing with quantum physics at that on. point. Like, it... I, actually, arguably, with, with where an electron is, up. it's not like a physical single thing going around it. You kind of have to imagine it like a big cloud, and it's kind of vaguely somewhere in there, sort of maybe ish. Ah, oh, quantum. Um, I was just getting into the whole you can't even observe them and they only exist if you're looking at them or some weird shit where it gets really weird and doesn't feel like science anymore. Yeah, sort of, yeah, you, did, you, you have to be quantum. looking at it. It's weeping angel stuff. That's yeah, what you're it doing, is. You're dealing with quantum. Shut up. There's that definitely point. some weird uncertainty stuff where like you, you've got to where observation changes shit and it gets really fucking weird. It doesn't sound like science anymore, but it is. Yeah, you can't observe and measure something at the same time. Also, you're doesn't, dealing... that, doesn't that just feel like dark magic that shouldn't be true? Admittedly. No, and gets fucking scary. The act, the act of measuring something interferes with it. It is scary as well, John, because quantum You know what? Um, that actually, that actually doesn't... makes sense. I've never understood that before, but you've just helped me understand that. Thank you. Well, you want to know, the, the scariest thing, John, right, is, you know, traditional physics, like, you know, Newtonian physics. and you know. Yeah, I know. I hated the guy who taught me that. Yeah, he was the, such a dick. I dropped the great it thing about that. I was 14. And, and the great thing about, <laughs> he dropped it and it floats the fuck off because you don't know how gravity works. But the great thing about that, John, is like that. <laughs> that seemed too complicated. That and quantum <laughs> physics literally don't work together. Yeah. Do they, do they have fights? Physics do the scientists like, like get together at conferences in rooms next to each other and have a big fight every year to decide who gets to be uh, like, like I'm the science this, now. this year? This is the, I, I'm the physicist of the group talking, and physics is bollocks, right? It just it's all made up. You know, what everything's I think made up. Go, Matt. Everything's made up. The points are made up. Prizes don't exist. It doesn't matter. I'll tell you what we should do, right? We always we always hark upon John here, mm. yeah, because we're like John, explain how you know gravity works. We didn't ask him this time; he just came up with this look to you and be like, I'm "Hey, as well. hey, Dad, explain the plot of Menander's Discalos, and I'll that. spend the That's next ten saying. minutes laughing Let's at you because you don't know it. I never do, do this that. to you. This Let's is just do that bullying, right now, John. Let's flip it around. I want to flip around, John. What what should I explain? Come on, give me one of the things from your world of classics that's not, you know. Homer's Odyssey. Also, that's important to our fundamental understanding of science. Science. I enjoy learning about science via well, I want to learn about classics. Guys. I want to learn about your world. No, I just want to learn about science. Well, we've done that for every other fucking episode, you gimp. Yeah, but no, I, still gimp. Don't I still don't understand gimp. how wind power works. What? I still don't it understand. No. The thing... No, yeah, but, no, no, but no, we're where, not going down that rabbit hole. No, 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 no. But where's the energy coming from? No. Like, surely we're, ta- oh, we're taking okay, energy John, from somewhere. John. Oh, surely yeah. we're, what is the, what is the oh, consequence of us oh. draining energy from the wind? Oh, God. It okay, must be John. coming from somewhere. Oh, we must be having a knock-on effect to something because we're taking oh, energy away God. from something. Oh. He's right. It's a closed system. Yeah. All the energy's got to go somewhere. It's got to come somewhere and go somewhere. Like, surely if we just keep draining energy from the wind, eventually that's got to do something that wouldn't John. have happened otherwise, right? <laughs> we drain right. all the wind yeah, no, we, we, we will <laughs> run out of wind, right? That is true. It's tr- John, John's right. We will eventually run no, out of wind. No, I don't think we're going to, because I think wind like, comes like pressure systems or something. But, like, it's coming from somewhere. Like, if we yeah. don't, if we would, if we keep doing this, like, eventually is there going to be some form of knock-on effect? Yeah. What is it going to be? If we, it will run out of wind. No, we won't. We'll Shut up. <laughs> this is a serious question. No, it's like, not. It, we, it's a like, serious question for like a five-year-old. Tidal power. Old. Are we slowly fucking up the moon? No! Right. Every time the tide changes, the moon gets a little bit closer. But like, if we're adding resistance to the tide and the moon's moving uh-huh. the tide, does that mean we're pushing the moon further away or drawing Stop. it towards us like ever so Stop. slightly, like a Stop. centimetre Stop. or yeah, something? Yeah, no. Yeah, we are. The moon's always getting closer uh, because of the are we pulling, pulling it faster by adding resistance to uh, the tides? John, honey, just as yeah. a quick note here, just uh, just very brief. I don't believe Dan. He's just, just saying yes now. Just very, well, I'd like to learn very, this. Very broadly, John, right? The orders of magnitude of energy you're dealing with when you're referring to the Earth and the moon and the sun are so comically high that it doesn't matter. 
Like, here's the thing. Solar energy, good. Because that's absorbing energy that otherwise would be bouncing around and causing global warming, right? That's actually, presumably, the more solar energy we gather, the less global warming there is, right? Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that, that strikes me as no, true. true. However, if, look, wind and tidal power, I'm suspicious of. Because, like, we might be fucking up the moon and I don't understand what if the moon... Is goes away or comes closer. John, like, you would Ivan really would enjoy this do- John, you would really enjoy this documentary I watched recently called Moonfall. <laughs> where the Shut up. <laughs> Rebecca like, got really angry and walked out while we were watching that. crash into the earth and it's going to have been our fault because we did too much tidal power. Yeah, no, it's true. John's right. We fucked. <laughs> yeah, the thing is, right, yeah, we were watching that The film, thing man. is, if the moon flies off, that's bad. But if the moon crashes into the earth, that's, that's worse. Like, that's even worse. That's definitely worse. That's science. Like, if we had to that do without was... a moon, we could do without a moon. We'd probably there's... go off and like hang out with no, Mars we, or something. No, we couldn't do without a moon. No, we wouldn't. Well, there's, there's a... It's fine. There's a bit... Well, no, it's fine. If the moon left, we wouldn't even notice. Have you checked recently for the moon? Anybody here checked for the moon Actually, recently? Actually, I saw I the have. moon. You know what? Literally, I was just thinking a couple of nights ago, where the fuck's the moon? And it wasn't oh, there. But, t- but last night it was there. I saw it, so it's oh, fine. good. But last Sorry, time I saw it, this, we, it was okay. Yeah, it had the, it's, it went off for Thanksgiving. It had an early Thanksgiving. When we were watching mine. Moonfall, right, there's a bit in it where um, the main characters, they hide in a barn to escape the moon. Um, and it's the <laughs> gravitational pull of the moon. Yeah, and yeah. it's the stupidest bit in the world. And what I really enjoyed about that bit is Rebecca angrily walked out of the room at that point. Wait, hang on. You mean like the moon because the moon's got close to Earth? Like now it's exerting gravity. People are being pulled up towards the moon. No, it's like yeah, yes. it's like right there. People, cars, houses. Like, the moon is like. Sure, but surely the gravitational pull of the Earth's always going to be bigger than the moon, even if the moon was right next to Earth. Like people would still stay on the ground because the Earth's got the stronger gravitational pull. Like they might be floatier, but surely like oh, John, the moon's this never is... going to be greater than the do Earth's I, gravitational pull. About... It's all based on mass, and the moon's smaller. Do, do, do I, know I mean, John's right. Oh yeah, yeah. That is the first problem. Like, with the if film you actually Moonfall. had like a, a, if you had two Earths right next to each other, then at the point yeah. next to it, really like your fu- things right between them are weightless because the two pools cancel each other out, right? Yeah, yeah. But if true. you've got a moon Everything next to the right. Earth, you might be you'll functionally you'll be floatier. John, do you want to know you'll never fact? be weightless, and you'll ne- you'll never fall to the moon do from the John, Earth. John, you can't. John, do you want to know from facts? True. Um, Have I actually done a real science there? No, you've done a real science. That's really oh, cool. fact. Do I, get, do, right. do I do a little star? I want to get a gold star from a chart. No, John, hit, no, yeah, no, John, right. I'll get his... to write to whoever did that. John, thing. the fun gravity fact, right, of the day. You're pulling on the Earth exactly the same amount as the Earth is pulling on you. Yeah, but the Earth's Whoa. much bigger than me, so John, therefore it's irrelevant. you fat bastard. Surely it's irrelevant. <laughs> not, not in that context, no. <laughs> if you jump yeah. and you fall, on a technical level, you're just, both the Earth and you are just moving towards each other. You're not being attracted to the Earth and vice versa. You're just both being attracted to each other. This sounds like philosophy, not science. No. <laughs> when you get to some science, it becomes I mean, yeah, I mean, gra- gra- gravity is a bit of a mess. Um, <laughs> but, sure. Sure. So, yes, that, that film was wrong. Oh, uh, you're right. That is the problem. Then again, with that wasn't film. like the point of that film that like the moon was a weird space machine or some shit. Yeah, we'll I don't want to think about Moonfall anymore. So it might theoretically have had like a special gravity machine that made it massier than it actually was. Massier. Yeah, unless you're in a barn, a rickety barn, in which case it's your. Yeah, fine. the mountains got pulled away, but the barn was fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not even joking. It's great. It's like how in Starfield, every like Earth lost its fucking complete everything yeah and so everything was burnt to sand except for the shard which is a Wait, glass the shard tower there? yeah the yeah. Sh- load, loads of like stuffs just famous landmarks are there the shard survived yeah the shard survived we've got no Sorry, did anything else in london survive, survive? No, no. Like, Sorry, just made, major cities around the world where lots of people live, like their famous local landmark, just gets to be there, so you can go right. visit. I have a question. I have it. another question. Wait, how far in the future is Starfield? Uh, Six years. It's about four hundred years or something. Maybe okay, so just to clarify, in four hundred years, the Earth is destroyed. Everything in London is gone, right? Yeah. All of the stone buildings that have been around for like hundreds and hundreds of years, right? Why are you asking? Yeah. I'm not cocking Bethesda. I didn't write this story. I'm not here. I'm not cocking you here to defend the logic of it. You're a classicist. This is like your vibe. What? You talk about it's old buildings hanging no, around no, after hundreds of years. I'm going to be honest. No classical civilization has ever suffered. Its atmosphere got sucked out. Yeah, but the fucking so- Colosseum's still there, isn't it? 
Yeah, but it, the app, yeah, because the atmosphere's not gone away. I don't know what would happen to the Coliseum if the atmosphere went away. It wouldn't it evaporate. The Where's Matt, it gone? It was the Matt. It was the magnetosphere that collapsed in Starfield. Yeah. Oh. So basically, there was full exposure to everything. Oh yeah, and then the atmosphere bled off because of uh, solar winds. Okay. Yeah. So so everything was turned to sand and everywhere's a desert except for the, the shard. shard because it's made out of like but slightly God, thicker glass. Let's be honest glass. here. This is, this yeah, is here for narrative okay. necessity, which is uh, they want to have Earth in the universe, but like if they had Earth, everyone would go to Earth and be like, well, where the fuck is like this stuff that was here previously? You've got to yeah. destroy the Earth in some complete, it's now been wiped down to desert level because if you don't, People are just going to go, well, I've gone to the bit of Earth where I know my hometown is, so why isn't it there anymore? Yeah. Like, you've got to just burn the Earth to nothing. It's not because even fallen over it's a bit. Only... It's still huh? not perfectly straight. It's not even fallen over. Even fucking The Last of Us buildings are falling over. It's there. It's just there. It's fully it's there. It's got, there. like, a bit of dirt on it, but it's fine otherwise. Well, they, they reinforced yeah. it a bit because they knew it was coming. Like, humanity knew this was coming. So, like, their favourite buildings, they, like, you know, propped them up with some extra yeah, strong reinforcements. Yeah, everyone's around, right? They're like, shit, we've got to save something in London. What's the one nah. thing in London we what should save? The shot. Was they shrunk it down and then they rebigged it after everything? Oh, they didn't have man. Yeah, yeah, they added some extra electrons. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> made it stronger. Electrons, like, they electron reinforced it, Matt. Oh, did they? Yeah, oh, that makes sense. Well, oh, I, I have a follow-up question to that, oh, actually. Oh, good. Hey, Jesus Christ. So, okay, we've, we've established you can add electrons to shirts. Um, have we? Uh, okay, sure. Okay, we sort of established this. Okay. I don't think we did, no, but, but okay. But, like, the periodic table doesn't go on forever, right? Like, at some point, if you add too many electrons, does the cell, does the atom just become unstable and you can't add any more? Like, well, is this what well, scientists, like, spend all their days doing? They just try and add more and more electrons because then they can invent a new element and then they can name it after themselves. Yeah, basically. Yeah. That's actually real, yeah. That's basically how it works. Yeah, nice. The higher you so go... If, they, Matt, if you just found a way to, like, add more say, electrons than anyone else has ever gone before, you could I've, just say, you could just name Matium. On, on, and that's on the an note, element it, now. Mm-hmm. On the note, it's not uh, electrons. Electrons you can kind of add a shit ton of and it doesn't really matter. It's protons and neutrons that we try and add that... And that's tricky, that, is it? That's... It's, it's, yeah, it's, they don't last for yeah, very the, long The thing either. is, all of uh, everything, the big ooh half life. Yes, yeah, the fact yes. that all of these well done, things John. basically a radiation term. When, when the when these really like heavy elements are made, they basically last for milliseconds, if that. Like, not even that. Yeah, like they just don't exist. Do they have to like, live for a certain record, period of time to like count and be added to the periodic table? Nope. As long as <laughs> well, it's it determines what's in the periodic existing. table, who gets it, to decide that? If it has existed. Oh, it's a guy called Dave Period. Shut he, up. He runs it. Who actually, who actually gets to decide this? Well, there's a big, it's, count, period, it's a big mess it? actually. There's a lot of drama in the um sort of. Oh I, shit! I'm interested in the tea. I, I want. I, I'm interested in the drama way more no, than the actual. There's a lot elements. of drama. Like there were these two like, research fuck teams. Fuck electrons! Give me the tea. There were these two research teams. Uh, I think one was was it Berkeley? What the fuck are you talking about? There were two research teams. One of them was making a load of new new elements, but like they weren't announcing them. And then another one, and there's like a, there was a load of drama about who should actually get the credit and who should name it. And there's a whole lot of. <laughs> When do we make unobtainium? Then it just yeah. ends in a big fight because we know. Okay, is so this a new element? Is it called philippium or you know timium? Because who knows? I mean, we do have. Yeah. We do who, have. Who got it first? We have euphorium. We do. Uh, named after the TV show Euphoria, of course. Uh, we that's have... in Starfield. Oh, was a big fan. We have Nobelium. <laughs> we have Laurentium. Fermium, yeah, Einsteinium. That generally made by a guy called Lawrence, who just named after himself. Ah, uh, yeah. Lawrence Fox. It was. That's what he did after he dated Billy I just realised, I know it was Berkeley who was doing the research because there's an element called Berkelium. <laughs> That's named after John. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> just having a joke just honestly the funnest thing this sounds like the funnest bit of science you just spend your time just trying to make new shit and then you get to name it after yourself fuck it that sounds yeah. great fun assuming you announce it before it. someone else and it doesn't cause a huge amount of drama get yeah, or blow up and kill you yeah. let's why don't you go and why don't you just go get your machine John and just start bashing out new elements well presumably yeah in my science version there's like functionally infinite elements there's no point in the peri- this is why there's no, this is why you never Dunium see the three. periodic table in Starfield. It's been retired because now it's pointless. Yeah, that's exactly why you'd never see a periodic table. So we've just table. established it's that you have to refer to it as your system, more. not like just... A- it's just because, you know, by the time you've printed one, it's out of date because you need to add another six rows to the bottom because some kids have just like, you know, made another six rows of elements and named them after themselves. 
Yeah, right. And obviously, ass, they're not, ass, and some ass. of them just, and some of them just can't, you know, can't be trusted. You know, just like you know, they, they give them they give them dumb names like you know down there like you know element one thousand six hundred eighty four Kelly is a slagium. It's like you know kids cannot be trusted with this technology, but they <laughs> no, do it abuse will, it. Be sure there is an awful limit. Ellie Mc Ellie Mcson. Yeah. <laughs> Good old Kelly is a slagium, but then unfortunately it turns out Kelly is a slagium turns out to be a really useful element that is essential to all future starships. But John, how do you think and they Ke- make... The Kelly in question's really cocky pissed off about this. John, John, how do you think they make these new elements? Tell Using that collider thing you just mentioned, blasting shit like protons and electrons at existing elements to make them bigger. Well, sort of. They, what, the, what they do is they'll take two existing elements and they'll try and basically fuse them briefly. Um, so you like double the size of them? Well, no, you wouldn't take two if identical the same elements. Same element. You you kind of have to take two. It, there's a lot of research that goes on on, on how you combine them and which it's elements. It's fiddly, isn't it? It's too fiddly. fiddly. Why did they make the periodic elements like this? Why did Dave Period do this to us? Uh, he was he was having his time of the he month. You should have just said there's four. There's dirt, fire, wind, and rain. <laughs> and then the, we we can make everything from those. What about ether? That's what you should have done. What, what about ether? Don't forget about ether. Ether, that's fire rain. <laughs> it's a bit of dirt. What is electricity in that system? Plasma. It's fire, water, dirt. It's all of them jumbled up. It's like lightning's brown. in the middle. Just... It's like the ultimate mega element, like Captain Planets. Yeah, Captain Planets. Go lightning. <laughs> Have you got a magic ring, John? <laughs> Actually, don't answer that. Yeah, no. <laughs> he, you don't want to know what he was doing at the top of the theater. Didn't want on top of the theater. Nah. Maybe if, oh, like, if heart story, didn't act, wasn't available, and just the other elements had to like use their rings together and try and summon Captain Planet, they'd summon Captain Lightning instead. Yeah, I mean, or Captain or, America. I mean, that would be interesting if, like, depending on which rings were available, they just summoned someone different. Like, there's all different combinations. Oh, how many just different get... combinations are available? If there's five rings, you need at least two to summon somebody, and then you can go up to all five. Okay. Because all five, five is only one possible combination. Mark. Does the order matter? No, the order doesn't matter. It's five times five. Twenty-five. Yeah. There's your answer, John. You did that really fast. Yes, yeah, five times five. Five times five. Thank you. Yeah, but you can. Whoa. You don't need to have. <laughs> but you can't have. Hang on, you can't have just one. It's got to be at least two rings. Oh, I thought you had to do all of them. No, no, it's gonna, it no, no. Okay, so rings. it's twenty. How could you have taken five off when all the, that's the only rule I've implied? 120? I, don't, I can't do it now. If any two rings, and any three rings, and any four rings, and then of course all five rings, but there's only five rings. So any combination of rings, but it can't be any rings in the row. Oh, it's the set five. Oh, yes. so wait, that'd be, that'd be 21, surely. I don't know. No, that seemed, that's care. nowhere near enough, surely. So you, you, you... I don't know. Well, if it's not, if the order's not important, it'll be one by itself. One, two, one, two, three. No, one, not two, one three, by four, itself. You exclude one by itself because one ring just does its own thing. Well, it that's what I'm saying. It'd be five, if, if we're doing five times five, and it'd be. Wait, is there, is there th- how many rings are there? There's five. Oh, so it'd be. Ring 20. of French. It's 20 then. Ring of literature, ring of archaeology. It's someone Captain Picard. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a point. <laughs> It's oh, the biggest archaeological find of the decade. Great if they were, I... These were just academic, academic disciplines. If I just got the classics ring, classics. Go I mean, go, sure Captain what, Classics. What would, my, what would be my individual power? Because it's not quite as good as like summoning fire. I don't think classics comes with the power, John, <laughs> as proven by <laughs> unemployed. I just you point at someone. Classics it makes them unemployable. Uh, no, that's archaeology. <laughs> I just can't get a job. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I like it. So go on, solve uh, my maths problems, nerds. I mean, I just made 25 up. I don't care. I was just, and then Matt was like, that's right. And I'm like, cool. Well, yeah, it's just, it's just, it's just five times five. No, it can't be just five times well, it's five. Five times four times three times two times one is five exclamation mark, which is what we're looking for, which is 120, but. 120 feels more more about right. But that's if you if it's the different orders matter, yeah. right? I don't know. I don't want to talk about fucking maths. It was 10 a.m. when we started this. You! Okay. Me? What? What start, about me? You want to start at 10 a.m.? I wanted to start at 10 a.m. because we Yeah, you said 10 a.m., with... you dicks. I didn't. I said from 10 a.m. and everyone agreed 10 a.m. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, I'm We thought you said 10 a.m. It was a misunderstanding. No, it wasn't. Yeah, it's, I made it I really uh, well. complicated. Hang on. Let me read my message back so we could just make sure. 
let's see. Let's just see. Let's just see. Let's just see. Um, 10 a.m. onwards for me. That could be any time. Yeah, exactly. Starting at 10 a.m. working from 10 a.m. Yeah, so any time from 10 a.m. onwards. Yeah. No, that no, 10 a.m. onwards with just says to me, start at 10 a.m. and then we'll go from 10 a.m. Yeah, it sounds like your problem there, John. Oh, yeah, because normally I say 10 a.m. backwards and we try and do it in reverse and then just flip the footage. <laughs> Okay, I like Sassy Daniel today. Space Sassy. systems that work better than Starfield. Have any of you played Everspace 2? No, maybe. No. Matt? I've played a lot of no. games. I don't like space really games. Really interesting They're all space shit. game, which does multiple tiers of space speed to create an environment that is really, really big and so far and huge, but can still be travelled around fast. Because you have your normal speed, then you turn on your boosters, then you go into cruise, then you go into super yeah, space or something. So that's as a like result, like every space something game does can be it, like fucking ten million miles away, but you can still get there in like thirty seconds. Yeah, you gear up. Mm. That's how every space game does it. Exactly. But but those are like what if it's particularly times? smoothly? Does it oh, particularly Matt's smoothly? It, work, it kind of it for me Matt. feels like it would solve part of the <laughs> issue of Starfield not feeling oh. big. M Matt just did a scream. What was the scream I from? Dropped something all over the floor. <laughs> And that's good. You scream. screamed because of that. Oh, it's, good it was it's very loose. It was very loose and it just spilled everywhere. Oh. Why what was it? For that scream, was it like a jar of spiders or deadly, deadly insects uh, of some form? Do you want the actual answer? Yes. No, I, I don't answer. actually. I definitely want I, the actual I don't. answer. It's, it's a jar of it look, it was a is a set of illegal cannabis. Matt. Oh. Matthew. It's, and I'm not even joking. It, it's legal. I have it legally. It's not even a joke. Matt, yeah, Matt's tricked a doctor into getting the doctor. marriage of guanas. I have a prescription. That's in the UK now. Can you be assigned to medical yeah. marijuana? Yeah. Yeah. I did not know that was a thing. Yeah. I'm on medical cocaine at the moment. It's fucking great, mate. No, uh, the NHS only give it to you if you are, uh, like, have chemo. But, like, privately, you can get it for loads of reasons. This Probably doesn't sound it. legal. It is this, legal. This doesn't sound legal it's at all. It's in my medical right. record. Okay. I spoke to my GP about it. Like, my legal medical opium, I know that's just a polite excuse <laughs> for my crippling addiction. I think you need to admit you have a problem. There is legal I medical opium. I can imagine opium. John's medicines all come in, like, black jars with corks in them. <laughs> like, little black little... Stuff. The thing and that I actually... Just... You know what I learnt about drugs recently? That oh, I, well, go. it's not that yeah. recently, but not that long ago. Which is apparently... Black tar heroin isn't a good heroin. <laughs> we can't talk about black tar heroin. I just well, always assumed are. black tar heroin was the good stuff, but I was told it's not, it's the really bad stuff. Yeah. I assumed it was like, you know how like if you go to like Tesco and like rather than just buying like, you know, the basic lasagna, you get like the fancy lasagna that's in like, you know, that's got like the black packaging and the swish gold lettering. I assumed black tar heroin was the heroin that came in like, you know, a fancy black package and it was the good shit. But apparently it's bad. It's not a credit card, John. It's... <laughs> I just kind of assumed that the, bl the black tar heroin was the good stuff because otherwise, like, you know, there was heroin. But if you're not, if you're going to point out it's black tar heroin, say, oh, wow, you got the, you, 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 you know, you decided to go for the black tar. Oh, yeah, you know, it's a special occasion. Like Admittedly, the black tar stuff stuff. Oh, very nice. For the longest time, yeah, I thought it was a well, well, does fucking tar imply like tar is like if you've been broken up for three years and celebrate the anniversary of it? It's not. Well, a, I don't. Well, a I material don't, that's a positive. Well, you I've say that, but go, I don't oh, know. Shit, look, it's tar. useful. Wow. Like I don't know what tar, what use tar has. Like I don't Tar's know. A to, horrible word. I mean, to me, tobacco doesn't seem particularly appealing, but lots of people smoke. And what's in there? Tar. You don't want that shit. Mm. Wait, I thought the tar was distinct from the tobacco. Because can't you have tobacco and like vapes and stuff? Yeah, and then you, you can take the tar problem. out. Yeah, tar is when tar you burn is a, something. It's really in cigarettes and things, and it glues mm. it together. Because they're like, yeah, it killed the elephants. I, just the mammoths of, like, I learned that when it. I was actually doing I, when I was playing a uh, trucking simulator. Actually, I learned that yeah, black tar heroin isn't the good stuff. It's it's the bad stuff. Why did you learn that in trucking wow. simulator? <laughs> I was just, we were just discussing, role ship, play. we were just shipping, Heavy role we, play. we were just shipping some drugs around in Trucking Simulator and I oh, learned lots about drugs while I was doing it. All right. We down, I downloaded hey. some of the DLC, some of that's wild, by the way. Um, cool. Yeah, so yeah, that was Ameri American Trucking Simulator, some of the DLC of that. You learn a lot. <laughs> I just enjoy the, when you said so wild, I was like, I could say some things that one upon a time got Jeremy Clarkson in trouble, but I've decided to not. The, yes, well done. You've learned something. Yeah, I learned so something. If you listen apparently to this, that's the bad don't, type of heroin. Don't do black tar heroin. Don't, don't do heroin. heroin. The other type. Don't, do, don't do heroin, kids. Yeah, there we go. We've we've got a good thing. 
Okay, other big games. We should mention, like, it's been so long since we've done this. We should mention, like, other big games and shit that's come out. I still enjoy the fact that Matt slightly knocked over some fucking flowers. Yeah. They're expensive. <laughs> <Anyway>. <laughs> They're expensive flowers. They're pricey flower boys. And they spilled all over me. So okay, we don't have time to give these full oh, so stuff no of flowers, discussion. Like just, flowers, um, it's fine. Make noises to indicate your opinion on games. Baldur's Gate 3. Fucking amazing. Yeah. What a game. Jesus Christ. That's not a 10. noise. I asked for noises. Yeah. Oh, what was that then, John? What was the... What is this? Is this not a noise? That's true. It's, it's, it's several yeah. noises. You know what? I, 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 I'm really struggling to get into Baldur's Gate 3. I'm trying. you thick as shit, John. No, I can't. I can't deal with the combat. It feels <laughs> really clunky. It's you the combat. The combat feels clunky to me. That's the bit I can't get. I really enjoy Home the story base. and the world, but I, I find the combat clunky, and I can't clunky. get into it. It's turn-based. You just pick what you want your characters to do, and they do it in turns. But I just really struggle with the, the exact positioning and the type. You've got ten million mini actions you can do. Oh my god! I bet fucking use a riot. <laughs> I've, 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 I, I've never done tabletop gaming. This is new to me because I've never done tabletop gaming. Well, neither have I. Baldur's Gate's a 10 out of 10. I don't really like turn-based at all. I agree. I think it's really good. I just, I, I'm struggling to get into the combat and I don't know what the barrier is. It's... <laughs> John's not fair. You just put the, you put the people where you want them to stand. I'm not if saying I can't a... do it. I've, I can comfortably uh, win fights. Like I just it. don't find it that, in, I don't find the combat enjoyable. Because it's... Because you don't know where to put your pieces. Because I, I just you like a grid, maybe it's because maybe chess. I'm being given maybe I'm being hit by choice paralysis because there's so much I could do. I don't know. No, just hit people with sticks. Just get the cool. Maybe sexy I, I think it might, maybe it's, maybe it's just there are so many options. I feel overwhelmed by choice, and I draw and I like I I I feel a bit more comfortable with a slightly more focused experience that unfolds naturally over time and gives you more and more toys you go. But like if you pick one for certain characters, you've got cock in. 20 abilities from the get-go. And maybe yeah, so that's you a bit just much. organise your hotbar. Neatly organise your hotbar and everything's fine. Maybe I'll just be like, which one's got no options? Like, who, does a barbarian just hit people with a stick? No, because she like goes into rage mode. And oh, has fuck's sake. Does anyone, is anyone simple that I could just learn the basics with? Your main character. <laughs> you can just be simple. Just do basic hitting. John, yes. what's, in your, what's in your kind of running for game of the year? Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm get this is this is what they'll surprise you if you haven't played yet. If you played the fucking Robocop game. <laughs> Holy Robocop shit, game. you need to play the Robocop game. I mean, I game. actually watched I've Robocop, Robocop last night, game. coincidentally. That's made by the same people who made the Rambo game, was it? And the surprisingly good Terminator game. Yeah, the surprise the Terminator, Terminator Salvation, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, that was yeah, that came out and that was uh people really liked that. This, and then it is it's a detective game that's got actual, you know, some decent proper detectiving going on. The shooting, you you fire any gun in that game and it feels like you've just set off a naval cannon pointed at your opponent. You know I mean, that's kind of what I like. It's from fucking the great. Games. Like you shoot someone and the blood goes flying, they go flying. It's incredibly violent, incredibly visceral. It feels a proper Robocopy. The detective stuff's actually pretty good. The plot is fucking hilarious because all the submissions get Robocop doing the most mundane shit in the world. Like one of the basics, one of the starting missions is uh, your partner's in a hospital, so Robocop clops around the police station, getting people to sign her get well cards. In yeah. his Robocop voice. It's the funniest shit I've ever seen. It's a brilliant comedy. It's a brilliant shoot. It's a great detective game. It's got a genuine shot at my game of the year. Okay. It's actually fucking great. You should play I... it. Play the I Robocop a... game. I played the demo and I was like, yeah, that's pretty good. But it's like, on... I've got a backlog like a motherfucker from this year. Because I was finishing off my book. <laughs> Paradox Paradox. available at yeah. nowhere yet. You can pre-order it though. And shit, it's done. It's a bit long. <laughs> Very long. It's fine. It's fine. Um, yeah, I haven't got around to it. But I played it. I enjoyed the demo. It's I was really, like, oh, this actually is, is quite good fun. It's really good. And then there's Resident Evil 4, the remake, which I, I honestly Not thought was going to be terrible because doing anything to Resident Evil 4 feels like cocking sacrilege to me. But bloody hell, it actually pulled it off, which I was amazed by. I, I only wanted to play The Village. That was the demo. Enjoyed it. Didn't want to play anymore. Why not? Uh, just, I've played Red Name for four. I'm it like, yeah, does go good. a little bit off the rails, and there's some very different stuff going on. Yeah, but... There are um, some new interesting things so, going on in it. I, I enjoyed it start to finish. I think it's actually... I don't think it's maybe... It's not as good as Village. Village had more variety. Guy, 
Village has the, the guy still burst out the fridge and scare the shit out of you? Yes, but they've guy, moved him, the so you don't know where he's when he's going to show up. <laughs> they've <laughs> moved him, bastards. But he's still there. No, I've had, yeah, I've had a lot of good things from um, Resident Evil Four, but no, it's I've played Resident Evil Four and I played the Village. I was like, yeah, it's. I it's, do it's think yeah, Village is the better game, and just because it's got. So like, I just you know, meant the Village, got, the demo, the opening. Yeah, game. yeah, I meant the Village the game. Yeah, I think it's stronger yeah. because it's got you know the classic Resident Evil mansion bit. It's got the really terrifying. Creepy bit. It's I got the runny round blasty, village. like more like Resident Evil Five, Six, Five and Six kind of bit. Like it's got more variety going on. I love Maybe the fetus like, level. Have you, played, oh. have you played Dredge? Yes, I love Dredge. I like Dredge. Dredge is yet. great fun. Dredge is. I've not finished it. I've done about maybe. I think I've done about like two thirds of it. I need to finish I, it. I got an ending when I was definitely not finished the main quest, Lol. and it ended. Did oh. you do um, some? Did you poke the cosmic horror or something? No, it felt like the good ending. What, did you sail away and say, fuck this shit, I'm not getting involved in this no, anymore? No, everything, I mean, not everything Which does feel like, great, generally but... in, in cosmic horror games, the best option does just seem to be, get right back on your boat, piss off and never think about this area ever again. Just No, I kind of fixed the area. Good but I definitely you. didn't complete the quest, the main quest of the game, and I was like, oh. Yep, good for you. Good. I, 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 really, I like I really a good ending where you basically say, I'm out, I'm going to find a different solution. Because I'm basically yeah. heading towards self-destruction and being eaten by Cthulhu right now, and I don't fancy that. Yeah. That's fair. I'm, I'm totally up for that sort of ending. That's a, and nothing that's touches my boy, Chia. <clears throat> well, nothing touches your boy? Chia. Oh, Chia. Chia's going to be towards the bottom end uh, of the list, but it'll be in my Game of the Year list. Hey, uh... He, uh, Cheer got a bit repetitive though. There were like sometimes it was just his do the same thing over and over again. But Cheer was small. Like, yeah. There was Cheer's a little bit a like I really life. enjoyed the exploration of Cheer. I love like, you know, using the map and trying to like plot where you Fucking were going next and shit. Treasure. The treasure stuff. Trying to find all the treasure things was so much fun. 100% at Cheer. I That's fucking same. loved every second of Cheer. I listened to the soundtrack all the time. Cheer's fucking going in. Mm -hmm. I love Cheer. I don't know what else came out this uh, year. Anyone play Lives of P? I played the demo and it kind of didn't quite feel like my thing. I played the demo and I was like, this feels pretty good. And then I started playing the main game and I went, I fucking love this. They've improved from the demo very subtly, but in ways that make it feel honestly fucking great. If I had to rank my favorite from software games... That's not one of Lies them, but okay. Like... Lies of P would enter that list uh, because it is one of them. It feels like one of them. Yeah, it's a Souls. Yeah, so just so many Souls likes because they're just based no, on the they thing. don't. They always they don't. I've never like even Neo Surge like the games that like try and ape it and copy it never feel like Souls like games. But this one does. This one actually feels like an actual from software game. If I played like Blind played all of their games, I'd be like, yeah, this is definitely one of them. And then I point at Sekiro and be like, get that shit out of here. <laughs> Man, that's not I one. didn't enjoy Sekiro. Didn't I like Sekiro a lot, but it's kind of like I played it once and I've never gone back to it. I'm going to be but honest, this... the, the Souls-like game I really enjoyed this year is Lords of the Fallen. I, I have not played really that enjoyed that. It's kind of dumb in a way, and it's got it's it's got its own bullshit moments. But I it got me coming back to it, which not many of them do. I very often hit a wall with Souls likes pretty quickly, and I went back to that one. I kept thinking about it. I yeah I did. Especially I, as I, one I, of the stats is Inferno. Like, oh, do you, would you like to level up your dexterity? Yeah, I'm not sure. How about your endurance? Uh, maybe. How would you like to level up your intelligence? Uh, okay. Would you like to level up Inferno? Yes. You Obviously, I want to level up Inferno. <laughs> What's the wall you hit with them, John? Normally, it's a point where the game's basically said you cannot proceed any further until you pass this particular bullshit area with where you've got to run through the whole bullshit area. And then a bullshit boss as well. And I feel like it's not a test of skill or an understanding. It's a test of endurance and cheese. And I find it to Ah, uh, the big tree that, from Dark Souls. That's what a lot of fucking Souls games are, aren't they? No. The elegant right. the elegant ones don't feel like bullshit, though. Like, you should, oh, actually, you should feel like, okay, if you die in a Souls game, you should always feel, okay, fair enough. I either didn't do something right or I have yeah. learned something. Yeah, I fucked that up in some way. Like, I, 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 Liza P, I've died only, like, a handful of times. Like, I'm kind of walking through the whole game, and that's maybe, that's put me a little bit on edge. I'm like, is this kind of, and then every now and then, just like a normal enemy will just corner you and gank you. Has and it got like, difficulty? Okay, yeah, no. 
Is what? it got difficulty like settings or is it all just like set files? They never I don't do. think so. These things just hey. don't really ever. Well, no, I know. That's what I wonder though, because like some of them, some of them are adding them now, and obviously uh, a lot of them are going for like hard mode, is like the traditional Souls kind of structure. This one I don't think had it. I might if it does, I'm gonna check now because I might be playing it on fucking easy mode. Well, that's what I'm wondering. Yeah, because like... old story mode. <laughs> not called it easy anymore. We got rid of easy, normal, and hard some years ago for some reason. Now it's like story, normal, and hardcore or something. <laughs> story, normal, and fucking. Oh, what was it? What was it? Point, called yeah, I, I don't know if that was like if easy had a stigma attached to it. So Definitely we all just did. collectively decided we were going to rename it easy to story. I mean, I think with with hardcore gamers TM, it's basically having easy mode. It's like having easy, normal, hard is like having settings called three inch, six inch, and nine inch. Oh, like. Is. They're not gonna click <laughs> three or six. And you know what? No what, 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 what do we have to re- do? We have to rename it to like you know story and a hardcore. Then specifically had a pop up saying this is for your second playthrough. This is for <laughs> if you know the game. This is not the intended experience for your first uh, playthrough. Dante must die modes in, in Devil May Cry One. God, they fucking you have to beat the game a bunch of times to be able to unlock it. But then it just you're like, all right. You're a you're a dickhead. Have this. Yeah, Mass Effect One. I think you could only go this on to like fun. hard, and then there were like two difficult things, but you had to beat each one to unlock the next. Though when they released the Legendary Edition, I think they took that out. I think you could just go straight up to Insanity mode if you wanted to. I've beaten Mass Effect One and Insanity mode. It's not even once you when you really know the you know how the systems work and how to build a character. It's not even that bad, and it just becomes quite I enjoyable. Do, all my memories of the Mass Effect, so I've not replayed them for. A, for a, many a year now, is just walking around talking to people in space stations, and that's why I remember them so fondly. Mm. And going into they, elevators and little elevator chats. Little, little elevator that, chats. That's the best way to hide a loading screen. Having your two little companions with you have a little discussion amongst themselves that tells you about the world and about each other and about the relationships with each other. Yeah. And I deeply love how when they've only just met, like in Mass Effect 1, when Garrus and Tali just meet, Garrus is an absolute dick to Tali. He's basically yeah. in a slightly xenophobic way. And in the third game, he actually apologizes to her. If they had that conversation, oh. if they are in an elevator again in Mass Effect 3, Garrus actually apologizes to Tali for what he said to her oh. in the first game. And it's the sweetest bloody he's moment. he's still alive. The character's like, I'm, just, I'm really sorry I said that thing to you. It's like, Mass Effect That's one's so good. Nice. I like Mass Effect 1. And then Mass Effect 2 came along and changed basically everything I liked about it. And then I didn't play it. And then everyone says, oh, Mass Effect 2 is the good one. No! Mass Effect 2 was the worst of the trilogy, and I will stand by this. I'm not saying it's a bad game, it's a good game. But Mass Effect 1 is the best, and Mass Effect 3, though people get hung up on the bad ending, did so much right for, like, wrapping up these characters' stories. I got, I got, I remember. Like, Morden and Thane and Legion and Tali, also good. When Mass Effect 3 came about, uh, and it had a multiplayer mode that you had to play. Yeah, that was bullshit. Yeah, and that multiplayer mode had microtransactions. Yeah, I said that, that this was, was the start of single player pay to win, that and the amount bullshit. of comments were like, "That's not going to happen." And look where we are now, motherfuckers. Mm, Listen creed. to me. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Also, that, that was bullshit, and the ending was bollocks. But like, I never did any of that. I still got an ending. Uh, I still got an ending. I was fine with. But like, most of it, like. Honestly, I'm almost amazed at how much they didn't fluff wrapping up these characters. Like, Morden, I cried. And Thane, I cried. And Liara wanted to get back together with you if you dated her in the first game, but you dated someone else in the second game. I had to go away and have a cup of tea and discuss this with Claire. This was... <laughs> no, literally, this actually happened to me. The first time I was playing Mass Effect 3, and you're on Mars for the first time. The first game I dated Liara, and I dated Tali in the second game. Brought my character forward, and Liara's like, do you want to get back together again? I was like... Holy fucking shit, what? Just put the controller down. Went to have a cup of tea. And said to Claire, my ex is trying to get back together with me. What should I do? <laughs> <laughs> Had to provide some context there after. Uh, oh, well, only yeah. after. <laughs> yeah. Only after. After the furniture started Thinking flying. about it, she was kind of biased when she advised me not to get back together with my ex and stay with my current partner. That was <laughs> that was a bias. That, she did have a biased perspective on that. Thinking about it, I don't think I finished Mass Effect 3. Well, maybe I did. I remember the shitty endings. But this is my thing. I played Mass Effect 1. It's too long. It's too long. I played 1, loved it, and never played the others. Really. And Citadel is a wonderful bit of... Like, if if you care about these characters and you enjoy the universe, Citadel is the best comedy game I've ever played. It's so cooking funny. What's Citadel? 
It's the literally DLC. just like it's oh. basically all your characters are sitting around and they have a big party and all the characters get to interact with each other in a house party and it's cocky hilarious. And there's also a really dumb, fluffy story about an evil clone shepherd who shows up and is evil and cloney and like does the dumb protagonist stuff you do as Shepard in the other games. Like literally when he's done gloating to you, he looks at you, stares at you for a second and says, I should go. And then just walks away like he's just clicked the I should go button in his conversation wheel. Yeah. It's the best shit. It's so it's, it's so cocky it funny. It's also the epilogue kind of to the trilogy. Yeah, it's an epilogue and it's Is really it? funny and it's very sweet. And it's just all the characters are constantly making dumb jokes about the mechanics of the game. It's basically, a, it's a light-hearted comedy like a little epilogue. It's basically a love letter to the rest of the franchise. But and it's also set before the ending. It's set before is, the ending, yes. Yeah. So uh, which is odd for an epilogue. In a way, you can kind of... Be, it works better as an ending than the ending. I think they kind of realised they fucked the ending and it was so fucked they couldn't <laughs> really... They? They, could, they could mitigate it slightly, but they couldn't <laughs> fix it. So they basically just made the pre-ending ending the new proper ending. And it's such a better ending... If you just kind of, like, pretend after Citadel, the ending doesn't happen, and Shepard, like, dies in the final battle defeating the Reapers, there's like, yeah, that what that's it. That that works. Perfect. Yeah. Don't Just don't ignore everything that actually happens in the real ending of Mass Effect 3. Pretend Citadel <laughs> is the real ending, and it's such a fucking lovely ending to the game. It's just made... The people who wrote it, like, clearly loved these characters, and it's just a love letter to the rest of it. It's great. It's not the people who wrote the ending. It's wonderful. <laughs> it's just so wonderful. And like, literally, it's about the power of friendship, which our whole franchise is. But this, it's explicitly stated in the ending. It's basically like the power of friendship. And the reason Evil Shepherd loses is because he doesn't have friends. And the reason you win is because you've got friends. Yeah. It's just like, sounds... like literally, yeah. Evil Shepherd yells at you, you know, why, why, why can't I beat you? And it, and then like your friends come and help you, and he doesn't, and his friends don't come and help him because he doesn't have any. And it's, yeah, but... it's, it's, it's just the entire idea. It's just a little DLC about how about the ma about friendship. Friendship is magic. That's it. Yeah. It's wow. wonderful. It's so wow. sweet. What a nice thing that you've definitely talked about several times in this podcast before. Shut up. It's great. <laughs> I love it. You said shut up to me so much today. Yeah, well, you're this just, is you're, 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 rude, you're mean to me too. You're a bully, Daniel. <laughs> I, know. I know. I am a bully. I'm a big, fat, smelly, ugly bully. Hey, play Spider-Man 2! I've not played... I've not got a PS5. <laughs> ah, poor as well as ugly. <laughs> what? I mean, dumb. <laughs> I don't I have mean, a PS5. I should get one. I have a Honestly, PS5. The, uh, there's I so little on the PS5 I really want to play, to be honest, but I should get one just for that. Yeah, PS5 definitely front loaded its stuff it's like look there's cool games i'm like cool no, and it's like, right, like okay i wouldn't mind playing demon souls i wouldn't mind playing spider-man 2 well this is the thing that's though right yeah. spider-man 2 spider-man 1 so that's on PC. on pc everything's on, on PC. pc aside from demon souls and spider-man 2 everything else and ragnarok i guess that'll be on yeah. pc sooner or later oh yeah they will be yeah but everything else is on fucking pc so i'm like well i don't care um spider-man 2 review it's the most fun costumes and photography Spider-Man game. And once you 100% it and then realise that you can turn off all the web assist, it becomes a much better web-swinging game as well. Which was fucking infuriating to find out after I completed the game. I really enjoyed it. Um, oh, you mean I did like, maxing like... out like, the realism or whatever. So if you go you, you go splat and there's proper physics... Well, and da you Daniel's a Spider-Man 2 it's purist. A more, it's a lot more proper physics. You're basically just making ropes come out the top of your character's head and... Swinging off them, so it's a lot harder and it's a lot more fun. I mean, I kind um, of like the idea that, like, during the, the middle game. of, like, you know, a major, clearly very set up set piece where you're chasing a character down an exploding thing, Spider Man could just l slam into a lamppost, fall to the crowd, and die, and the lamppost did him in. I find that deeply, yeah. delightfully entertaining. Yeah, there's not, none of that. You'll have, like, a recovery thing. It's very recovery. Or well, you can't turn on full damage if you've Yeah, what, and also, if I was having that, presume, I was assuming you'd also max out full damage. Surely, like, yeah. you, if you. Like, it feels odd to have a tricycle where you've taken the training wheels off one side but left them on on the other. Do you, do, Why do you need training wheels on a tricycle? It's a three-wheeler. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I feel like it would be steadier with five. Or, like, seven. I have seen I have seen clowns ride tricycles. Oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs> now, that, yes, like a tiny tricycle, like Homer does in The Simpsons. I'm pretty sure anyway, the little bicycle, the little bicycle trick with the with the the, the loop de loop. I'm pretty sure but that's a bicycle, fairness, not a tricycle. I think is genuine. Like I think it's genuinely a thing of skill. I mean, how would you make a tiny oh tricycle God. where the the pedals are that small do a loop de loop? That seems impossible to me. 
Okay. <laughs> I mean, surely, like, you know, the, the, the joke seems to be Homer's incompetent because he can't do the loop de loops. Like, I don't know how you would do that loop de loop. Are you like, okay, honestly, Homer? That's a high skills of... thing. Do, 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 how do, 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 it's a cartoon. Yes, oh. but the implication of the joke seems to be Homer messes it up repeatedly and thus he is an inept buffoon. But, like, I don't know, man. I don't blame him for not doing it. I'm not sure how you would. Sorry, that's one of my favorite Simpsons episodes. Um,. And it's entirely for the kill wealthy dowager line. <laughs> like, is this about Spider Man Two? No. Mm -hmm. Look, I oh. don't. I don't the thing with Spider Man Two, right? In Spider Man One, I'm like, oh, this is new and fresh. And Spider Man Two is just more. It's more, but you get to play as Miles, like you did Miles's best, best character. Yeah, yeah but like, the counterpoint, you get to play as Mary Jane again. I think that's the thing. That yeah. that and Ragnarok, both of them. When those games came out originally, they were, like, so new and fresh and it was a big deal. But, like, it's just more of that. And I'm like, well, I had that already. Well, I feel like this changes... This had enough... Cha I mean, the problem with this one is it, it definitely goes, like... I like Spider-Man to be, like, you know, the guy on the ground. Friendly neighbourhood. Uh, friendly neighbourhood Spider-Man. Like, Spider-Man 2 goes full alien invasion. Oh. Like, it's out of fucking... No and you're like, oh, oh, oh. You see and it's just... It's dumb. And I really hated every second of the story that was Parker's side. But I love Miles, and I like the the side missions where you play as like um. There's what one side mission where you play as like Miles is a, a friend. Is, uh, not this the ball, thing is, nice. I think my Spider-Man game I would buy a PS5 for is I I don't really like Spider-Man has loads of gadgets and is a gadget superhero. I think Spider-Man yeah. should be a he's got his web shooters, and the game should say to him in the tutorial, "Hey, you can." Uh, you shoot webs and you can shoot big webs and you can shoot webs that go from point A to point B to create, like, you know, threads and whatever. Have fun. Figure it out. It's an immersive sim where you figure out the cleverest ways to use your webs. And that's yeah. it. I don't think Spider-Man should be a here are four tools on timers that you here are gadgets. I don't think Spider-Man should be Honestly, a gadget hero. And that's the, what the kind gadgets, of put a bit. I 100% the game. I do not know what the gadgets do. I just would go into a battle and spam them all, and then I'd deal with whoever was left standing. Because they didn't matter. I didn't bother to level them up or anything, because I was too busy like you, unlocking that, really that, cool costumes. That, that doesn't sound good. That sounds bad. No. No. Uh, and I must say, like... The, if you didn't like, care enough or were invested enough to know what your own core mechanics yeah, did. Yeah, I didn't fucking give a shit. I didn't, I didn't give a shit. The plot was pissing me off. Every time I had play as Mary Jane, I made this noise. Oh, for fuck's sake. I it like was... how every bit of footage I've seen with Mary Jane, they just, like, gave her, like, a gun... And she yeah, she becomes so, basically the, she becomes Agent Forty Seven. So she she can gun. just basically They're... take down an entire army by herself. Yeah, they should give that gun to the bad guys because that's a good gun. Instead of the stealth missions, you basically can just run through and obliterate everybody, um, including like one of the really strong enemies. And it actually is easier to kill one of those strong enemies as Mary Jane than Spider-Man. Is there any <laughs> universal re expression as to where she got the world's strongest gun from? Uh, yeah, she just kind of had it. Okay, she just ordered it on Amazon. Yeah. Such a world's strongest gun on Amazon. Like, okay, I'm now stronger than Spider Man. I mean, yeah, she should have had just a Glock. It would have saved a lot. Of <laughs> Spider well, actually, MJ, Spider it MJ. So it's a gun. Bang, 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 bang. That's reminded me by a roundabout thing. Better because, game. of course, the podcast is coming back. So, and of course, something that has came back from the earliest of the podcasts is. Oh, who is it, Daniel? Your erectile dysfunction. That's right, David Cameron. <laughs> Oh no! Why would you bring? We're talking about Spy. I was going to talk about how you get all the cool suits from Spider Verse. So there's loads of. Don't mention that fucking prick snake on Doctor Who's birthday. All I know, but it's, everything's coming back. What? You know, every everything's Doctor Who's birthday tomorrow. Everything's coming back. And that date's What's when Doctor Who's? But you mean the anniversary of New Who coming back? No, the anniversary of original Doctor Who starting the twenty third of November, nineteen sixty three. Oh, like the first Doctor first Who. Doctor episode. Yes. Yes. Which so has Doctor been involved in all 60. sorts of catastrophic, hilariously wacky legal wranglings recently. Yes, it has. But brilliantly, it doesn't matter because they're only arguing about the bit that's like caveman politics. It's absolutely shit. And honestly, skipping it makes for a better viewing experience. But tomorrow, yes. BBC are releasing a recolorized version of the first Dalek serial. And they've knocked it down from 175 minutes to 75 minutes. <laughs> Um, which is a big improvement. And they've re edited, they've also recorded new lines with like the original Dalek voice actor. Oh. Which is. He's a madness. Alive? I believe he's like 90 or something. Nora. 
I don't know if it's the original original or like one of the original ones, but like, yeah, there's like newly recorded lines that Russell T. Davis has written. And so they've basically gone, what if we just kind of made it a lot more modern? No, um, that's fair because you're not allowed to say it because you'll get attacked by nerds on the internet. But can we be very obvious that lots of old who the main reason it's not fun and you don't want to go back and watch it is because it's catastrophically slow and a story that really has about 40 minutes worth of content is serialized across like five episodes it's a bit bullshit look, i can literally see a dalek from where i'm saying a full-size proper dalek i completely agree with you it's barely watchable <laughs> i mean like it just feels like every single serialized multi-part episode not to with bullshit cliffhangers could just be squeezed down to one probably could be squeezed down to one tight 40 minute episode and that that would be sort of watchable i mean they even then have, not it, like entirely. three edits if that it's like two or three edits they were allowed i mm. mean could edit two or three times it just had to be big long takes it just kind of oh. had to be the thing um and now doctor who's you know beat the meep and david tennant and rushing about and silliness i'm excited for it it's, it's for this saturday by the way john new episodes is that the new episode season, where yes tennant's season back and whatnot season one russell's calling it wait that's yes the they're, they're re 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 doing it and possibly yeah. are they to, possibly the next episode is going to be like a soft universe reboot or something i like the children no, i liked the, no it doctor was it a children need special that russell did with tenant yeah i like that it was fun they brought davros back with the julian bleach the guy's been playing him since tenant was the doctor yeah the first time <laughs> davros back funny dalek story Probably, like Roz, probably Roz, his name? lots of people on Twitter Roz, taking it far too seriously, given it's a children need story, and that's almost certainly you should not be worrying about whether also, it's, it's Doctor Who. <laughs> What's Twitter? Oh, Twitter. Why are you on I Twitter, just love John? how much anger it was like, yeah, but oh, but then that, why, why that shouldn't be as messed up with it. Like, Come on, it's the cocky children need special. Do not worry about whether this is actually a continuity thing, for fuck's sake. Don't get off Twitter, join Blue Sky, it's great. I mean... The Doctor does refer to the scene as... He's like, oh my god, is this the genesis of the Daleks? Yeah. And I'm just like, yep, 10 out of 10. No, it's, who gives a fuck? It's Doctor Who's continuity. It's a, it's a messy blob of shite. And yeah, that's why I'd, we love um, it. I'd, she, uh, okay, oh, I'm, okay. I'm gonna, uh, can I say, actually, can I say something? You, right? here's my, I was about to give a hot what, take too. Would you like to give your hot take first? I believe that David Tennant is not going to regenerate. What? I think we're spinning off. I think there'll be some shenanigans like they've done before, like with the making the Doctor Donna thing. And I think Tennant will still be a version of the Doctor who's alive and about the place. Shudy will go on to be the actual 15th, but then we can have a, a David Tennant Doctor Who series as well as the Shooty Gatwa uh, Doctor Who series. I mean, do you even need to do that? Like, even if they do have David Tennant regenerate, like David Tennant could just show up anyway. Like any any other Doctor crossover special, uh, it means a bit of a Mayfly Doctor though, because he's only going to be around for three episodes. It's a quick regeneration turnaround, isn't it? I think shenanigans are afoot. It's already shenanigans are afoot because he's regenerated into an old boy. It's, look, it's all shenanigans. It's happened before. <gasps> okay. Everyone goes, "Oh my god, it's never happened before!" But in the fiftieth anniversary special, we meet. Uh, the 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 uh, what's he called? Fuck the curator. Yeah, played by Tom Baker. Oh yeah, who is a futuristic version, a f super future version of the Doctor. And yeah. they did also very specifically say, yeah, Peter Capaldi intentionally regenerates into someone he'd seen before. Yeah. Like sometimes the Doctor just regenerates into Not someone he'd seen before. Subconsciously, he did that. Yeah. Sometimes the Doctor so... just sees someone and be like, yeah, I'm going to be you next. Fuck you. Yeah. Then uh, maybe I'll go so... back and mess with you a bit. You know, I want. I just want good stories where if they blow up the universe, they magic get back at the end. Mm. <laughs> That's all I want. If they go, it's a big fish. Oh, look at the big fish. We got to deal with the big fish, and then they halfway through the episode forget that there's a big fish, and we never hear of the big fish again. Yeah, I don't want, I want to stop the Doctor to I be the center the of the universe. With Nazis. What? I don't want the Doctor to sign with Nazis again. Oh, yeah, that was that, really bad. Yeah. No, I, my problem with the Doctor is that... That legitimately happened during the last run. They made, um, they kind of made the Doctor like Jesus, Space Jesus. Yeah, that'll be undone. I, yeah, I don't want it to be... I just like him being a guy. I don't think it'll be undone, but I think it'll be, uh, oh, maybe. I, I, it becomes an ooh, maybe. Tracked this, this as well, where, like, I Picard, the most important person in the universe. people generally all remember well and love Christopher Eccleston's run. Yeah. Because that begins with them basically saying, right, 
all that other shit that happened before irrelevant. Literally, all you need to know is uh, there's been a fucking great war. The Doctor is kind of struggling with that fact. And everything else <laughs> can just be introduced as it's necessary. You do not yeah. need to know anything. Basically, we've tossed all the convoluted bullshit nonsense in a bin. And we're starting again from scratch. And mostly yeah. we stuck with that for like four seasons, the entire original RTD run. Like, you know, stuff comes back, but it gets introduced one by one. We get the information we need to. And then along comes Moffat to make everything needlessly, stupidly overcomplicated and wanky and constantly promising an exciting, sexy thing's going to happen next series. And then not bothering to resolve the thing that happened the last series. And That's it gets Moffat. into an absolute cocking mess. And then Chibnall comes along and even more cocking nonsense happens and stuff that's previously been established just gets ignored. Ah, no! No! Why are you making more bullshit? Stop making it bullshittier! I like Moffat. I know, and you like you like Matt Smith. I, I like lots Matt of individual Smith. episodes of... I like Matt Smith, and I like lots of individual oh. episodes of Moffat, but he just kept adding more and more bullshit onto the pile of bullshit with the promise the next series was going to, like, reveal the secret behind the bullshit. Then it didn't. It just put more bullshit onto the bullshit. Then it got to the end and didn't bother explaining anything. I mean, Chibnall's run had an episode where Jody sided with Amazon over the Amazon workers, so... Yeah. Let's just... And yeah, also said to... that putting a spider that was slowly suffocated to death out of its misery was evil. That yeah. was that was the Let's point. Not... That, that's literally the point I stopped watching. The point where oh, she right. was it's opposed UK, to yeah. euthanasia of suffering oh, creatures. Oh, so did you not watch... That was the first of her seasons, right? Yeah, was that, that, was her, that was her very first season. Ah, episode... you know, the first episode... First episode of her second season, well, the sec it's a two part, so the second part yeah. of it. Um, the 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 master uh, is has sided with the Nazis and because just they're comes in the back. war for he's, some he's reason. Back now, he's, no reason. He's back and angry for no reason whatsoever. Yeah. Um, and the master sided with the Nazis and stuff, and Jody beats them and kind of outs him as a spy and says, "You're a British spy!" Ha 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 ha! And is one, and the Doctor is one, and the Doctor is beaten. The the. The, the master and he's kind of sending Nazis after him and you go mm. and then after that moment the doctor sonic screwdrivers the fucking master and goes ah now they're gonna see the real your real face because he's, he's, he's of, of color yeah now and so basically the doctor after winning was like well that's gonna suck for you here I'm gonna make you fucking brown so you even have a worse time with all of the Nazis that's not the yeah. only time she sides with Nazis. <laughs> well, just it's a special place in my in my mind, just because most series like Avengers just fall out of them a little bit, and I get a bit behind. I don't remember to catch up. Honestly, well, like Doctor Who is one of those rare series where literally I just watched an episode that I hated so much and just found so wrong headed, and it said, "No, I'm done." Sorry, what do you mean that's again. not the first time uh, she's had that with Capaldi's run? Ara Arachnids in the UK was episode was just so wrong headed, where Doctor's like, "No, I'm taking the firm moral principle that." Putting Let them the, mercifully and quickly putting down animals in pain is a moral evil. There's like, no, done with you. I cannot yeah. be dealing with this. Goodbye. I mean, so I what gave up drinking Capaldi's run. What the fuck is wrong with you? I gave up drinking Capaldi's run because I um. Well, which episode was completely doing pissed a you podcast. off? Was it Kill the Moon? No, I didn't get that far. It was Caretaker. Wait, it was Kill the Moon, the one where the moon's an egg. Yeah, I think that's after the one I yeah. gave. Up. It was Forest of the Forest of the Night. I stopped watching. Yeah. And I think I came back for Caretaker and I went, I just don't like this show at the moment. I still watch it. But Forest of the Night is fucking terrible. Yeah, I tried. Yeah, but Caretaker's just I got tried. something going on under the surface that I find uh, deeply uncomfortable. Because that's the episode where the, he's the caretaker at the school, right? Yeah. And like, he knows that... He knows that Clara is sort of into one of the other teachers. And he assumes it's the white guy... And he also assumes that the not white guy isn't very smart and must teach PE. And I, I that's, mean, oh, why are you making those assumptions, Doctor? That's kind of. Hmm. Yeah, but it's fine. A few episodes later, he punches like a no, racist I, in the uh, face. I, that's that's a weird thing to have written the Doctor assuming. It, the Jody killed a TARDIS just for fun. Yeah. In a clever reveal, aha! I tricked you. I'm killing a TARDIS. What? Oh my god! Literally, so many bits of this. Right? Actually, did we ever find out what happened to the TARDIS in the lodger? Because that was a there was just a TARDIS upstairs in the Doctor's house. It was something to do with the silence or something. It's based on an other story. That was it definitely, was older... There was definitely just a TARDIS upstairs in his house, and then it just went it away. Was it was ship. never mentioned again. I don't think again. it was a TARDIS. I think it was a ship. Um, 
but I think it was the silence had that ship there to do silency things, and they had landed there and overtaken. Yeah, Moffat really never bothered explaining anything. There's a lot of stuff he he snuck in. No, there. Stephen Moffat. What what is it? The mystery box. Very clever. He's like, oh, do you want to see what's in the box? Oh, you want to see what's in the box? What's in the box? Pile of Stephen bullshit Moffat, just keeps getting box? bigger, and then eventually he just pisses off and leaves a pile of bullshit behind him. Like with Sherlock. Yes. I don't like Moffat. You know what Moffat's next show is. Mm. I don't. Oh God! What have they give? What have they? What have they let him ruin now? Well, he did the time traveler's wife, which is really good. I really like Stephen Moffat. I, think I know he's you've met him. Um, fucking. I, I like Moffat. I think he's a great. He's the reason I do writing. Like I'm a writer because of him. Yeah, and he also can he write good individual me, yeah. episodes. He can write good short stories. He can write good isolated bits and pieces. But he should not be allowed to write multi-series arcs. He comes up with some fucking cracking monsters. Yeah, no, I think he's... he's is, a, but he yeah. needs somebody to, st- what, to stand over his shoulder and slap his hands away from the keyboard occasionally. Like George Lucas. Well, he's, his, next, his next show is about um, a newsreader who gets done for council culture. And, um, oh. Oh, that's know. not a I, good sign. I don't want to know Stephen Moffat's opinions on council that, culture. That sound, that's worrying. I don't, I don't want that to happen. I mean, that doesn't you seem just, just on the plus it. side, that's going to be the show. best H Bomber guy video. Mm. Holy it's fuck! I'm looking forward to that. Oh yeah, wait, no, I remember that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Well, Stephen Moffat is many things, and I don't care about him. And I didn't like anything like he did, it. aside from the episodes he just wrote on his own. We can all agree what the best thing he ever wrote was, though, right? Link. The the Tintin movie. <laughs> Not seen that. Which one? The animated one. The animated. Which, there's so many animated Tintin movies. That does the, not narrow it down. The animated one, written, the, the Steven Spielberg... The recent, more cgi one. Produced by Peter Jackson, written by Edgar Wright and Stephen Moffat one. Oh. That one. I'm going to be honest, I'm not super into Tintin, so this has kind of passed me by. There's a new Tintin I, game if you want, if you're into Tintin. No, fuck Tintin. The, not fuck Tintin, the Tintin, what was it called? I can't remember. The Adventures of Tintin? The the unicorn, the something unicorn. Tintin in the Congo. Oh, oh no, the, maybe not. Oh, hang on. Tintin not, in the Amer- Oh, not that one either. Oh my god. Oh god. There's there's a lot of these that don't look like they've aged well, guys. <laughs> what is it? What is it? It was just called The Adventures of Tintin. Fuck's sake. Yeah, it came out in... It was recent. 2011. Okay, it's 12 years old. Um, It's the best film. It's the best Indiana Jones film. It's the best adventure film. If you've not seen The Adventures of Tintin, the slightly CGI'd over people's faces kind of weird, mixed, weird, strange-looking thing, you need to see it. It is the best Indiana Jones film. It, I mean, it's directed by Steven Spielberg. I'm sorry. It's better than... Sorry, sorry. Indiana Last Jones. Crusade is one of the best films ever made. I don't... I'm not going to... Okay, not even the best one. Um, the the, <laughs> but it's... it's Yeah, so it's it's Spielberg got together, it, it directed it, and the screenplay was written by Stephen Moffat, Edgar Wright, and Joe Cornish, who writes the fucking Cornetto trilogy and shit like that, and fucking Attack the Block. Oh, Attack the Block. Remember Attack the Block? Did he write the Cornetto trilogy, or was that Simon Pegg? I can never remember which way around. I mean, I will give you. I'm just very quickly acclimatizing myself to the Tintin lore, and I, I, I will say he was he was ahead of his time. One of the stories that was written in 1950 is about wars in the Middle East over the oil supply. I mean, that's, that's, been, a, yep. that's been a yep. thing since it was. I wouldn't say that's before its time. That's just been a consi- consistent thing in history for the last fucking 150 years. It's even yeah. including like you know the sabotaging of oil pipelines and whatnot. This was this is this is excellent. I just yeah so and it was it was produced by Spielberg this Tintin movie and Peter Jackson so you've got the Cornetto trilogy Doctor Who fucking everything Spielberg's done and Lord of the Rings the people behind those came together to make one incredible incredible adventure film that I legitimately think is the best adventure film ever made it's like in my top 5 films of all time it's amazing it's amazing Interestingly, in the it's... Tintin universe, Tintin was the first person on the moon. Hey, he went there in 1954. Sounds about right. Sounds and about right. also, though he was originally supposed to just be going, obviously he took his dog um, and Captain Haddock and Professor Calculus. <laughs> um, the detectives, Thompson and Thompson, snuck on board the rocket and went too. 
And as a result of that, there's not enough oxygen to go round. <laughs> oh, this is this is some good shit right here. They need to make a movie saying, on that. In the Adventures of Tintin film, Thompson Thompson are played by Nick Frost and Simon Pegg. Captain Haddy just needs to just throttle the Thompson Thompson to death to save the oxygen. It, it's a sad, it's the sad necessity of life out in space. Do you know who plays Haddock? It's Andy Serkis. So you know that's going to be a fucking, well, ridiculous one. Daniel Craig's the villain. You need to see The Adventures of Tintin. Nobody watched it. It has a sequel that's stuck in development hell for fucking ever. It's the best fucking, you need to see that film. Everybody should watch that. Can we make it a thing? Before the next episode, we all need to do the... Th- we... Is this, is this becoming so a movie good. podcast as well now? No. Yes. Maybe. <laughs> I will say, should... there's a, there's, uh, how... What do you think it's... Uh... Rotten Tomato score is Daniel. The Adventure Tintin. Yeah, I mean we know it's bullshit usually. Hundred percent. Um, hundred percent. It is seventy-five. Both audience and um, critic. Well, uh, you know what that means twenty-five percent of people are fucking idiots. It's Joe Cornish's lowest-rated uh, film on Rotten Tomatoes at seventy-five percent, and his highest-rated as Attack the Block, which says which is good for Joe Cornish. It's the most fun. Who didn't like it? I'm looking at these people. I'm going to find them. Joe Cornish. He, he wrote Tintin, Attack the Block. He wrote the first Ant-Man film. No, he didn't. He wrote the original first Ant-Man film with Edgar Wright, which was then scrapped and made into Well, yeah, a... he's, got, he's got a credit for screenwriter on the original Ant-Man film. Which would be, yeah, yeah, because he was scrapped. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Edgar Wright is still listed as a writer for the first Ant-Man film, even though it wasn't. Actually, they kept elements yep. of it, didn't they? You really need to watch the Tintin movie. I, I cannot recommend it enough to literally everybody who's bored enough to listen to this. I mean, honestly, I, I'm just going to... I'm afraid I said I'm going to be ordering Tintin Goes to Space just because I, did this, <laughs> I think there's a terrible tragedy to the fact there's not enough oxygen because the detectives snuck on board the moon mission for no one explained <laughs> reason. And as a result, at the end, one of the rocket scientists has to just deliberately throw himself into space and dies in space so there's enough oxygen for the fucking detectives who weren't supposed to be there to get back to Earth. I feel like Frank Wolf, rest in peace. All right, you, you shouldn't have died like this. All right, they should have... Haddock should have thrown the detectives straight out the airlock the moment they were discovered. They had no business going to the moon. Why are detectives even need on the moon? It's like the one place you don't need detectives. There's no crime yet. This right, up, like but a literally the, the only crime that's taken place in space it. is the detectives breaking and entering into the spaceship and trespassing on the moon. All right, and you don't need detectives to figure out who did it. It was them. You're right, John. I'm just feeling. I'm feeling a grief for Frank Wolf, the rocket scientist <laughs> who ended up having to literally die in orbit by blasting himself into space. So two cocking intruders who weren't supposed to be there and had no business being on the ship got to make it back to Earth after their day out to the moon. He should have added more fail safes and extra oxygen. He just clearly didn't do his job very well. He deserved to die, in my opinion. The problem is, this is in 1954, so they didn't have like little robot arms that could just like take the carbon and turn it into oxygen. <laughs> have you watched Apollo 13, John? Yes, I love Apollo 13. Do you remember that That's scene? Where and as I understand right it, like you, you have to take like pretty. You can't take lots of spare like stuff because every single pound matters. So you take as little as you can. Mm. That's right, yeah, presumably. Maybe it's less so today, but back in those days, like, every single pound mattered. So you you, you took the absolute bare minimum. Did you just say not so much today? Well, I don't know. I assume, like, technology's advanced a bit. No, we we got rid of gravity. Yeah, we we did that. We got rid of gravity. I assume maybe we've got a bit more flexibility Today. Now Elon makes all the rockets like, now. Like basically we, big fireworks. We send, we send, we send, you know, astronauts up into like, you know, the space station with a bit of fun stuff to mess around with and shit. Like it's not quite so much. Hey, it, this is a life or death. Let's see if the maths works out thing. It's a Actually, bit. It's a bit more day to day. Quite recently, the International Space Station uh, ran out of oxygen because there were two detective stowaways on board, <laughs> and so one of the the scientists had they to needed to be out. there. There was space crime. There must have been some space crimes in the meantime. They weren't in Starfield. Everyone's so fucking nice. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> As a ranger, can you be a police person in Starfield? Can you just go about like solving crimes, or is that just 
No, you have to solve no, a big why? conspiracy thing. Oh. It's it's oh, one right. of the one of the missed opportunities to my mind is when you sign up to be the UC Vanguard, i.e. you're just like, you know, being a first responder in the UC, you get immediately pulled into a conspir a big conspiracy, and that's what it's all about. And when you join the Freestyle Rangers, you don't just get to go around being a space police person dealing with, you know, flashing the badge and solving small problems. Uh, instead, you go around, you really get drawn into a big different conspiracy and have to go and sort that out. And they're actually, you know, they're fun, they're well written, I quite enjoy doing these missions. But I just kind of wish, you know, I got to do a little bit more moseying about, you know, doing some day-to-day -day work as a vanguard or a ranger. Rather than immediately getting pulled into a big conspiracy. So just protagonistitis. Yeah, kind of. There's definitely an element to which you get... Like, you know, it doesn't feel quite as egregious as Skyrim. Like, in, in Skyrim, where, like, you know, the representative of a guild just kind of picks you out of the crowd and says, Hey, you, you should come and try being a thief right here. How about you steal something and I'll show you where our thieves' headquarters is? Like, you know, I feel like it was the most egregious in Skyrim. It's not quite that bad. But it's, it, it's definitely, there's definitely an element of protagonist syndrome going on. Well, there's no, there's no other way to structure the fucking game otherwise, is there, I suppose? I think, well, you actually, know, Oblivion has you way more slowly being, you know, integrated into, uh, into the different, uh, guilds and whatnot. It feels like it's much like, you know, you definitely feel it's, say, the Fighters Guild. You are starting off as uh, the random new kid who's just being sent to deal with uh, very low stakes affairs. And it's also a good way to get you out into the world, visit a location you might have not been to before, have a fun journey on the way there, come back, get a paycheck. Like, the big conspiracy in Oblivion Fighters Guild doesn't begin to, like, halfway through it you're mostly just doing little fun standalone missions and like the conspiracy is slowly being mentioned in the background but it doesn't involve you because you're not important enough for it to be involved in it and like slowly you get pulled into it over time and that's i think that's like the peak of uh, faction quests in, in uh, sorry in bethesda games that the in in obsidian like you kind of feel like when you join a faction you are like the lowest ranking person in the room you're being given you know little introductory missions to prove your worth before the big stuff happens yeah but and do, do you end up leading the first mission for both the main factions uh, you are straight pulled into the massive conspiracies do you do you um oh my god have you dropped more drugs no i just completely forgot what i was saying have you been taking the drugs? Yeah, I think no. yeah, that's that's where the drug that's why there's no drugs to drop anymore. They're all gone. Oh yeah, no, I ate them all. I just went no, no, he's no, no, used no, 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 them no. up. He's he's he's, he he's ate all he, of the drugs. You know, he's got back from Tesco. He got the you know the taste, the difference, black tar heroin. It's nice packaging. <laughs> <laughs> now he's away John, with the fairers. John's gonna be walking to whatever market he buys his food from. I assume he buys food from a market. It's kind of his <laughs> no, thing. I mean, and just do, you, do you think I'm actually him. kind of calling in from like the past right now? I mean, I, I'm the local lord of a market town. Yeah, fuck it. Why not? <laughs> actually, that sounds like a thing you Some of the do. things you believe. But what you're going to do is you're going to be walking down, you're going to be humming a little ditty to yourself, <laughs> and in the distance, you're going to see Matt with his flaming red hair on a fucking unicycle <laughs> off his tits, just cycle past you, and you're going, ah, I don't think you could ride a unicycle right. while off your tits on black tar heroin. I think that would be, that would impact your oh, coordination what... sufficiently. You Coming next time on the podcast, John. <laughs> <laughs> we get John the hot on black tar challenges. heroin and make him ride No, I mean, I'm going to be honest, like, I, I'm not a big drug person, so I don't really know what all the different drugs do. Like, I don't know. Is there like, you know, I imagine some drugs would leave you in a, in a position where you would not be able to use a unicycle, even if previous to taking the drugs, you were an experienced unicyclist. But like, you know, are there drugs that work like Jet in Fallout or like Aurora in Starfield, <laughs> where they make you really good at shit and actually that make you better at riding a unicycle? John, there are stimulants and there are relaxants. And it is not Fallout 4. <laughs> not Fallout John. 4, John. John, yeah. John, name a drug and I'll tell you exactly what happens if you take it. Okay, the problem is I, some drugs I might know two different words for the same drug and I don't know if they're actually different things. Well, I'll let you know, I'll let you know. Cocaine. Okay, cocaine. If you take cocaine, yeah. you're really good at business. Okay. Like you get good at numbers. Okay, yeah, so that's that's like, you know, that's it's like mentats in, in Fallout. If you take exactly. them, you're better yep. at intelligence and stuff. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Speed. That's just cocaine. Is it, is it? Is it? Yeah. Yep. Same thing. Is that true? Yeah. Just in a different way. So it's not in its appeal. I don't. The problem is I don't know whether you're just saying this or not. I don't know. Matt, can you verify out? these things? Can you just kind of can you be my fact checker live and just say true or false to anything Dan says? It's easier why, that way. Why am I Matt, just say true. It's great. 
John, ask for another one. Heroin. Ah, so heroin, right? That's the cocaine, but you inject it into yourself. Okay, now I know you're not now, being correct. Well, no, actually, it is still made from the same base material. Like and all it drugs, depends, just basically the same effect. sort of thing, basically, just slightly differently done. Speed is not yeah. cocaine. Oh my god, of course it's not fucking cocaine! Meth. It's a, it's a bit. We're doing a bit. Yeah, but it's not that much of a bit if you're just confusing cocaine We're and doing a bit. Meth. The bit is John's a, John knows nothing about the world outside his fucking ivory tower. I don't feel bad fun. about not knowing much about drugs. I'm <laughs> fine with not knowing much about drugs. You went to university! Yeah, and I hung I out with lots of people who did lots of drugs. They were lovely people. It just wasn't my scene. I never saw a single drug at university. Yeah, I saw get... so many drugs at university. Well, yeah, but that's what I mean. That's what exactly were. the thing, John. So surely you get Love some knowledge just by, via fucking osmosis. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, 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 I was just, I I was just to... happy with, with large amounts of alcohol. I never really felt the need to... for anything else. I'm not saying you need drugs. I'm saying to... that you, I'm sure you would have got some information just from being around people doing drugs, regardless of whether you're doing drugs. I'm not doing yeah, drugs. They were doing drugs. I didn't want to ask questions. It was fine. I used, I used to do charity work for children. <laughs> uh, I said did like charity drugs. I said just did I did cocaine no, to raise money. I did charity work for children um, who were like uh, from like really like like poor backgrounds and had gone through some shit. And I kind of learned everything like dealing with those kids and kind of the things that they had seen. You dealt the kids uh, drugs. I didn't deal the kids drugs. No, the parents and stuff were the, 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 the drug people normally and the kids were sort of the thing of that. So it was like a a, a thing where I could help out with the kids. This is true. This is this is a bit. No, he's this not is doing a thing that I did. That's how I, I know this is true. Matt knows it's true. Like I used to... That sounds very heavy and dark. Like I would have thought they'd, they'd want to like a, you know, professional with some qualifications to deal well, with this. Well, this, this is why there were so many work. fucking clowns on unicycles down in Essex, John. They well, need something it, to distract them. It's because, like, when I was at school, like, I lost a few friends to things like drugs and stuff like that. Like, a few of my, my school friends, an illness, bizarre. I had a lot of people die. Uh, someone's, like, sister got abducted and killed because of drugs and stuff like that. Um, there was lo there was a lot of stuff like that that happened. Um, and so I was like, I kind of want to, like, uh, mentor some kids through this thing. That's so very noble. Yeah. Um, a also, nice you boy. get loads of demo drugs. I took all the demo drugs. I was like, right, so obviously if you take speed. Whee! So I learned it all that way. That's almost all true. <laughs> <laughs> one half of that's true, one half's false, and we'll never know which it is. <laughs> Thanks, Garak. It's me. I am the Clothierie. A. Cloth Cloth oh, my a. God. Uh, what? Do you, do you want to try that again? I just thought you just dropped more drugs there. I thought you did as well. Shh. No, if, if I dropped more drugs, it would have went... <laughs> Not. Oh my god. <laughs> like, I, I guess it depends what form. Like, were the drugs like in like you know a little powdery thing, and thus it's very hard to get them back in the jar, or are they already pre-wrapped in like you know, so it's very easy to put them back in the jar? I I ground them. Yeah, they were ground like like like. You know when you buy oh, dry... Oh, so, so you've lost some to the carpet, you're going to have to hoover it up. That's it's not so good. It's, it's like I spilled dry basil on the floor. Well, it depends. Is, there is, this, is this a hard Matt, floor or is it yes. carpet? Matt, yes. Matt, yes. when you were around my house the other day and you made pizza and you put what you called magic basil on mine <laughs> and then I couldn't sleep for three weeks, that wasn't drugs, was it? Oh, it was definitely drugs. I'm, poison, you know, committing, I'm, I'm admitting to a crime live on air. We're live? Are you, <laughs> it, 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 was, this, I like, was this carpet or hard floor beneath you there, Matt? Hard floor. Okay, so it's not so bad, but actually, like... Do it's drugs on me. the same rules as food? Like, if you drop something on the floor, it's like, oh, well, I don't want to do these drugs now. They've got, they've been on the floor. I don't know! If... Five second roll, you just get on the floor. Well, just I don't know. I just, kind of, I just kind of assumed that, like, you know, you don't want to, like, leave it there in case, like, your cat comes along and eats all your drugs. That would be I, bad. I don't have a cat, first of all. But it's built on me, it's built on my chair. Not it's since it died from that overdose. It's expensive. <laughs> Ted got exposed to marijuana once, and that was really bad. How? Oh. Uh, because part one of the areas we walk in, sometimes some kids like do drugs, and there's like the odd little like leftover. What is it like? Butt, a little bit at the end is just left, and we think he got exposed. <laughs> and we think he got. Sorry, I thought you meant like the kid exploded. <laughs> it's just their butts left. 
Whatever, like, like, the little, the little, little paper thing that the drugs are in. I don't fucking know all the names. But, like, there was still uh, a yes. little bit of something going on. And you, you know they're there because sometimes you can smell a bit of, like, cannabis in, in the air if they've been there recently. Oh, they've been and doing the nice... wacky back of year, lads, but it, quick! But it's, been a, it's been a nice... The old nice devil's lettuce! We walked Ted there. But at some point, we think... He, he got back from a walk, and he started trembling and and drooling, like, really aggressively. And he couldn't stop him. We had to take him to, like, the hospital. Uh, I mean, sorry, we had to take him to the hospital. You... And they said the most likely candidate was uh, he he had been he'd absorbed a small amount of drugs. But dogs are really sensitive to marijuana. Like the tiniest bit of marijuana, they can have a really negative reaction to. And he had to stay in uh, most of the evening, being given um, what was it? They gave him something to help flush, to flush his system. <laughs> Charcoal. Uh, treat, Char- act, oh, God, act, activated God. charcoal. He had to be given a load of yeah. activated charcoal to help like, flush his system and like neutralize the drugs. <laughs> it's a good and, joke, Daniel. Um, yeah, even the tiniest bit of drugs can really mess up a dog. Yeah. Do you? So is this where you got your idea of the spacesuit that absorbs things through its feet? Because it's the power your dog has. I, mean, I assume my dog just snuffling around just like ate a tiny little bit of drugs that then dropped or something. But uh, that or it was a type of a mushroom. They said the most I like, candidate was exposure to marijuana. So yeah, Ted, Are you aware, Ted has a drug problem. That, you're, that's basically just like patch notes for Dwarf Fortress <laughs> when the, the cats started getting like overdosing on alcohol because they were it was like stepping through it and licking it off their paws and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, poor old Ted did indeed have a run in with drugs. Just say no oh if you're a dog. Goodness. Has he had a run in with cake? John, yet? How does it feel? How does it feel to know that your dog is cooler? Than- <laughs> I don't think Ted enjoyed the experience, to be honest. I, I think he wouldn't do it again. Well, yeah, he didn't have any fucking... He didn't have any Doritos, did he? <laughs> I just felt like he wouldn't do it again. I think he didn't have a good time. <laughs> you go for a walk. Guy, we supposed to go down this bit of the road, didn't we? <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> I do like the idea that he's like, he wouldn't do that again every night. He's out. He's getting his, he's getting, he's getting his fix. From like I can just Jim imagine like John's just John's taking photos of his dog with a big spliff hanging out of his mouth, going, Oh, I'm gonna give the dog a spliff. And then he's like, Yes, it must have been on the walk. Mm-hmm. Wait, so you're saying there's drugs in Oxford University? Yeah, just sitting around. Oh d- Jesus Christ, are you asking whether there's heavy drug use at Oxford? Fuck drugs me, yes. Oxford University. Fuck I am me, shocked. Yes. Shocked! If you're a Shouldn't journalist, shocked. Jesus. I, but I'm obviously not if shocked. It's sarcasm, John. Listening. I I never saw a single drug. <laughs> My uncle. I think John's dog's cooler than me as well. <laughs> I I hung out with some absolute reprobates in 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 my limited defence. So you know that's that's why. I was mostly in like a library or playing Left for Dead, so there wasn't much use for drugs there. Mm. Um. I don't remember much about university, I'll be honest. You were only there for two and a half minutes, in all fairness. I was... Two and a half minutes is a, is a, a lot longer than I was and, there. And, and Matt didn't make it there at all. No, I wasn't no, allowed. I Matt doesn't even have GCSEs, but that's them. Yeah, I do. Aww. I mean, just no a, Matt, No A-levels. Matt runs my company. Matt, what did you get in maths at GCSE? D. Matt, and how advanced are maths? Is doing? <laughs> Very badly. <And> advanced maths? <laughs> I didn't do it. You know when a jigsaw falls into place? (laughs) Oh no. Oh no. We're not struggling because I'm bad at maths. I mean I mean it can't help. I kinda now think that we are. (laughs) It definitely doesn't it definitely won't help if you think about it. The 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 the, the quality of maths is not is not relevant to the the issue. What's two plus two? Five. See, that's not even a funny number. No, we all knew you were going to say five. Yeah, we exactly. All knew... Try it again. John, what's two plus two? 73. Funny. <laughs> perfect, pitch perfect comedy. That was hilarious. Because you all went, John's going to say four because he's thick and he hasn't followed the joke. But he's not. He's whip smart, that boy. Mm-hmm. Boom. 73. Who's ever thought the number 73? No one. I mean, it was the year John was born. But apart from that... Whipped it out. I mean, speaking of things that are kind of broken and numbers that break all the time, has anyone played City Skylines 2? Oh, no. I have. Wait for patches. I'm on a wait for patches bent this year. 
It's too many good it's games. It's still fun, but it's it's kind of not entirely working right now. I'll I'll be honest. All I'm playing at the moment is SimCity Four. That's the one I got on my Steam Deck. Oh, I'm the original, the classic SimCity Four, the classic. Well, the fourth game. It's not that original. Now, you, but see, you know, yeah, oh, it's great. I enjoyed City Skylines too because uh, when they sent us the codes for it. They were like, oh yeah, it's a little broken, but it'll be patched before launch. And I'm like, yeah, all right. <laughs> they said that to me about Fallout 76. Oh, <laughs> But like literally City Skylines 2, I was kind of playing it and going, this is running like shit, but so did the original. But it's prettier, so. And you can still dig a giant hole to the center of the earth and then just pour your poo into it. <laughs> and create an infinite poo hole. Oh. And speaking of that, oh, I think no. it's time to wrap this up because it's been three hours and I'm old. It's the and return. I haven't. I ha... What? It's the return. It's an appropriate return length. Exactly. It's really not. It's as long as Avengers fucking Endgame. That was wrapping up 10 years worth of fucking films. We're wrapping up like three missed months. Mm hmm. Yeah, and those three missed months would have been like two hours each. So right, it's and they contain Starfield. We had to talk about Starfield. You know, great game, love it. Just had to figure out precisely how. I'm going to tell you a story now. Oh no! And I'm going to probably retell the story during the award ceremony. Um, it's the moment I hated Starfield. It was in my second playthrough, and I went to Mercury. I went to Planet Mercury. You know, Planet Mercury is quite close. I mean, I've never been, but it should be. I'm guessing <laughs> hot, like really cocking hot. Yeah. Hot. Yeah, it was hot. It should be, and I went, I'm going to go over. I mean, look at I'm the assuming sun. the sun should be pretty fucking big. Like, if you look at the sun, it should be big, right? I thought it was going to be bigger than it was. Yeah, it was a bit underwater. It's like when you take a foot of the moon. I mean, obviously, you know? I'm not sure. So like, big, maybe like in the grand pinprick. scheme of things, are like a Mercury to Pluto all quite close together, and then there's a fuck off massive distance to the sun that's way bigger or something. Now, but here's what happened, right? I was standing on Mercury, and the temperature was in the. It was on the hotter side, shall we say? Yeah, you you, you wouldn't want to be wearing a fleece. You'd you'd wear a short sleeve shirt. Yeah, and you shorts. probably wouldn't want to be wearing skin. You'd, you'd or wear flip like flops. That. Yeah. Sure. If a flip flop, flip flop weather. Yeah, yeah. You'd, flip flop you'd, weather. You'd bring, you'd bring a bottle of water to help cool you down. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You bring a bottle of. Oh, it's, gone. it's like yeah, it's like, those, um, it's, like, it's like those announcements they make on the tube. Like you know, make sure you take water with you. It's, it's hot out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's not it's not as hot as the fucking central line. Yeah, but it's hot. Yeah, okay. Right, that's the yeah. that's okay. the that's Mercury. The line. Got it. Mercury. So I'm on Mercury yeah. and I'm looking. At it, I'm going. Ah, oh, the sun's not as big as I thought it was going to be. It's stupid realism. I want like out of wilds like ah in my fucking face. Um, but then. My companion bobbled over, and it's the first one you get. Lady, I can't remember her name. Did she not wear a spacesuit? She wasn't wearing a spacesuit, Sometimes John. they don't. John, she wasn't wearing a spacesuit. And you know what she said when she came up to us? <laughs> bit cold you know out she today. Said? She said it's a bit cold, John. <laughs> She's complained that it was cold while not wearing a spacesuit on the surface of fucking Mercury. You know what? I had to thank his bonus points to Starfield to me. That's the level of Bethesda Chang. Uh, yeah, that is, that is peak Bethesda. That's I think that's perfect the thing. Bethesda Chang. That's, that's adding 2% to the, the review score for me. Well, that's, that's the weird perfection. thing with Bethesda games. There's a weird charm to them breaking, which I find quite endearing. Someone like literally LTF running, out, out, and running up to me in their casual wear on Mercury and saying it's a bit cold today. <laughs> it's just cocking 10 out of 10. ALTF4, uninstalled it, I have not Perfection. gone back. Perfection. <laughs> not going back. Absolutely Perfect. top tier, S, S tier game. I, I just like a bit of the thing is, I like a bit of Bethesda junk. I just don't like it when it breaks the entire fucking game like it does in Skyrim a lot. I like that they applied Bethesda jank to their actual design document they in this did one. Do that that was an interesting twist. Yeah. Anyway, I'll wrap this up because someone's yawning and I need a shit. Yeah. Uh, and that's always a good time to end anything. Someone's yelling and I need a shit. Also, so in Matt's conclusion, here. Starfield's good. <laughs> good night, everybody! Yeah. Matt, are you editing this? Yeah. Oh, good. So, Starfield's awful. Don't listen to John. Uh, bye, everybody! <laughs> <laughs> bye.